This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. This episode is brought to you by ExpressVPN. That's just grand. Wow. That was the duck? You'll see it later. Okay, that's a little tease for the, <laughs> the ExpressVPN duck. I have to listen to the ad now. Absolutely. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. My name is James, also known as Mr. Sunday. With me, as always, is my co-host, Nick Mason. Thank you very much. How are you holding up? The listener, not you. Oh, You're ma- fine. You seem fine. <laughs> I'm all right. I'm actually yeah. doing all right, yeah. I think I've settled into a routine. It seems I've been doing this for what feels like 100 years, you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Mm. I've also had a little bit of help as well, because Claire's sister's moved in. Oh, there you go. To assist us as well, which is... Taking a bit of the bit of the bit of burden off um, the old uh, the old uh, ball and chain, which is I'm are pointing you, at are myself. You, are you the ball and chain? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a burden. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, maybe. Yeah. Okay, so no, I'm not doing too bad. What about you? I'm doing all right. Good. Yeah. Get, you get a routine. What happens is you get a routine going. Yeah. And then you go a little bit mad from the routine. Yes. Then you then you then you then you switch up the routine. Then you go mad from that routine. And then you do a podcast. Yes. And now's the perfect time to do a podcast. If you're a celebrity, if not, shut up. Shh, if you're not, shh. (laughs) What we want is more celebrities doing podcasts with bad audio quality. (laughs) If they ever get good audio quality, we're doomed. I don't know what we're going to do. I don't know. Just keep doing this, I guess. I guess we're really doing that. But anyway, I hope all the listeners are doing right. (laughs) Yeah, me too. Let us know. Keep keep us updated. It feels like there is is progress in most parts of the world, which is really good. So. Uh, don't run outside immediately though, because you'll, you'll get it. You'll, you might get it. You might get and it. Kill yeah. yourself or somebody yeah, else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's the dilemma as well. It's kind of like you hear that things are turning. You th- hear that mm. things are turning a corner, and you're like, "Well, time to run out in the streets." Yeah. Mm. Too don't bad. do that though. Get hit by a car. You will. Didn't yeah. You forgot to look because you've been mm. inside for too long. That's right. <laughs> Every time I watch a show mm. that's made pre this time we live in, I'm like, <laughs> oof, like there's just people at a bar, and I'm like, oof. <laughs> what are you doing? Well, I can't do that. Don't you know? Yeah. Don't they know? <laughs> it seems like they don't know. I'm like, oh, simpler times. <laughs> so, uh, side note: How good's going to the pub going to be? Oh, mate, when, I cannot wait. In all when your children yeah. are grown up, in oh, twenty years, in 20 years <laughs> mate. I've penciled in a date, obviously, yeah. very tentatively, yeah. but I cannot wait. Yeah, right. But for me, it'll be I don't know, pretty soon. I hope. Hopefully, yeah. Well, uh, you know what? I I will not go to the pub until you go to the pub. <laughs> this I swear. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm going to the pub as soon as this is over. I know that. Yeah. <laughs> you mean the <this> show? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, here's something that is over, though. Comic-Con has been cancelled for the first time in 51 years. Sad woo. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah. For the first time in how many years? 51. 51 years. I didn't know. It was got- but then when you think about it, it's 2020. Yes. So it makes sense that it would start in the late 60s. That's after your Star Treks and your, and your but Planet of the Apes. No, it's not the late 60s, though. 51 years is 2020, so that's like the 80s. Oh, my God. I also thought it was the 60s. When you went 51 years, I went, oh, No, no, it wouldn't be the 80s. It'd be, 70, it'd be, it'd be 69. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you just want me to say that? Or no. did you really do bad I, math? No, I didn't. I've, I've lost my capacity to do maths. Why, why would I need to do maths right now? There's no reason. Some people get upset when you say maths. Oh. But I agree with you. It is maths. It's math. But it's whatever. It's arithmetic. No, it's arithmetic. Oh, yeah, it is too. Yeah. yeah. You're right. So, look, uh, people were saying that part of the reason it was so long, something to do with insurance and whatever, so they had to wait to delay it to get it. Oh, whatever. I see. Right, right. I don't okay. know. I didn't look into it because it doesn't matter to me. It's just not happening. So, people are kind of calling for an online component, which could very well happen. You do a virtual whole H. Yeah, put it on Zoom. Put it on Zoom. Get a million people looking at it. So I think how many people can you put on Zoom at the one? I think it's eight, but you can have maybe you can have bigger groups like watching a thing. I don't a know. Zoom within a Zoom. Zoom within a Zoom. Mm. But I know there's some data breach stuff that people have had. But I don't know. Again, these are things I did not look into. <laughs> well, it's not part of the purview of this show. Exactly. Red Hot Comic Book Movie News mm. in buttholes. Well, speaking of, oh yes, Disney Plus be blurring butts. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's great news <laughs> yeah. for people who don't know. Uh, mm. And I guess this. This occurred, I mean, this would have happened when Disney Plus came up, but I guess nobody has looked at this movie. The movie has, Splash. Has, yeah, has yeah. Only, people have only just looked at this movie. The movie Splash with Daryl Hannah as a mermaid and Tom Hanks as a regular man. Yeah. Uh, they've censored Daryl Hannah's butt in this movie. But in a very... Weird way. Yeah. Because what they've done, so in the movie, if you haven't seen the movie, uh, she's a mermaid, but she comes on land, she's got legs. Yep. And... 
there's there's a few shots of her from the back. She's got very long blonde hair, and it sort of goes down to a butt. Yes. But so what they've done in this instance is they've extended the hair mm. using computer generated image technology. It's so almost it's flawless. below her, but it's you'd almost be, you'd flawless. Be hard pressed to notice, except in the sense that it looks like she's got a big pair of fur underpants <laughs> yeah. on. That's what it looks like. But maybe not even on. Yeah, <laughs> oh, just maybe maybe <laughs> stapled <laughs> stapled to her legs. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, weird. Yeah. So I I think there's a like a better solution to be would would be a crop. In that sure, situation, yeah. it would not be a good crop. Like a crop top. Like a crop top mm, on the yeah. day. That's what they should have done. Yeah, they absolutely. Didn't that. They didn't yeah. think that far ahead. But no, I think if you cropped the scene, it would be less obvious. Right. But it just looks atrocious. And I or th- you should be kind of maybe okay with your kids maybe seeing a butt. Yeah. It's, it's fine. Everyone's got yeah. one to the best of my knowledge. Even mermaids. Yeah. So that's that's, right, yeah. that's a good lesson for everybody. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So I think it's just made it a bigger deal than it is really. Yeah. Mm. But it makes you wonder, doesn't what else they're taking out in Disney Plus? No, I don't care. Okay, what about this? <laughs> I learned this week, or maybe last week. Maybe did I mention this on the show last week? Apparently, they've mm. Iron Man, Iron Man Two, and Thor. Yeah, are uh, they changed the film? Yeah, they the the new releases of those movies have, have have had the film grain taken out. Yeah, because those were the three Marvel Studios movies that were made on film. Yes, the only ones before they switched to digital. Yes, and so they look more. They look more film, like yeah. m- and been, and somebody's gone through and sort of slapped a filter over them. Mm. They look weird now. Yeah, I haven't actually looked at them. Yeah, look, when I said I don't care, I meant like <laughs> I don't care to look. Yes, like I think it's not a good idea. I think whenever people go and alter films, there's of course the outrage, but yep. there is something about seeing a film in its original, all the original butts that were in it. Absolutely, all I'm the saying. original butts. Exactly, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> So maybe that'll be the new thing mm. that kids find out in the woods. Oh. Just original copies of Splash on DVD. <laughs> <laughs> what do we play this on, they say. Mm-hmm. But then they go, oh, PlayStations have DVD players. That's so right. We'll just play it on that. Yeah. Now, you mentioned this before the show, and I've just written it down because I need someone to explain it to me. Yes. Uh, Quibby. What is it? Well, that, I keep hearing people going, boo, boo, we hate this. You've made a very... Uh, dramatic leap there and assuming that I know what Quibi is. I well, just why wrote, did you bring it up? I just wrote Quibi and I put a question mark because <laughs> I'm not entirely sure what it is. It appears to be a short form streaming service. So it's like Netflix. Yep. It's got original content on it, but all the content is like 10 minutes long. So it's like yeah. episodes of things, but they're 10 minutes long. Uh, and the main selling point, as I understand it, is you can watch it on your phone in landscape you can also watch it in portrait. Excuse me? You can watch television. I as said excuse me? You can watch television <laughs> as it was intended in portrait mode on your phone. Well, when I was a kid, yes. there was a Casio portable television. Oh, yes. And it was like uh, it was like the size of a Game Gear, but it was uh-huh. sideways. So I guess it was the size of a Game Boy. Right, <laughs> yes. And it, uh, that's all I wanted. So uh-huh. now I can experience that. Mm-hmm. And big aerials. Do you remember those? Yeah, of course I remember. Yeah, because yeah. when they had one TV, so I'm like, if I had my own TV, oh my god, it'd change everything about me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we all. Oh my god, kids these days, only '90s kids will understand yeah, this yeah. probably, or whatever era we're in. <laughs> when did we grow up? I can't remember. Doesn't it's not matter. important. It's not important. Yeah. But just the idea of a TV, <laughs> yeah, you, know, you could hold in your hands. You were one TV household, or we had like a. I was going to say a big TV downstairs, yeah. like in the. You in had the, a TV. Well, which yeah, by today's I had standard. a TV, yeah. uh, which would now be considered a small TV in like the lounge room. Yeah. And then up like near the kitchen, there was a very small I TV. I do remember that. Was that a black and white TV even? No, I think they were both color TVs. Okay. Wow. Yeah. If we were a motel, we could advertise color TV out the front. Because <laughs> I do know people that would have like a second black and white TV yeah. in the nineties, which seems ridiculous because it wasn't really a thing, was yeah. it? In the nineties, I also, I also remember at least one person I, kn- I knew and I couldn't tell you who it was who had the, the situation of like big TV yep. which had broken and they had another TV. They just stacked it on the top. Incredible. Right? I feel like I've heard that as well. Yeah. Anyway, Quibi, short form, but it's original content. Apparently there's, there's, a, there's a horror short on there called The Golden Arm. Mm. It's like a Black Mirror-esque. Oh, and Westworld's in it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but anyway... It's it's. Uh, Does she become obsessed with her golden arm? She becomes or obsessed with her golden arm. So it's it's called it's a it's a anthology called Fifty States of Fright. So okay. there's going to be fifty episodes, fifty ten minute episodes, each of which is in an American state, okay. and they're all like supposed to be like spooky stories from each state. Stop me if uh, if I'm incorrect here, but would you say it's also fifty states of mind? Oh, could be. Yeah, because you say Black Mirror. Yeah, and I say State of Mind, and you say oh. 
Yeah, <laughs> makes you think, doesn't it? But, uh, but also, I'm hoping it's kind of like the Sufjan Stevens thing where he was like, I'm going to do a, I'm going to release an album. Each one is based on a state in America. I'm going to do 50 of them. Then he did like three and he just stopped talking about it. What do you think happened? Do you think he still made them? I suspect he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> what do you suspect? Yeah, I thought I also suspect that. <laughs> yes, yes, good, good call. Okay, so is um, this something you would get though? Because in all honesty, yes, some of those things you said doesn't sound terrible to the, me. The portrait, the portrait orientation, <laughs> that part, obviously. But I'm uh-huh. glad you opened with that because I've kind of forgotten it. Okay, but the idea of a of a of a sexy golden arm that you fall in love with. Yep. <laughs> 50 short horror films. Yeah. I mean, okay. there's got to be a couple of good ones. Got to be there. a couple of good ones, right? So that means someone else will watch it and go 23 and 14 are good. <laughs> yeah. Alabama's good. Hawaii's good. The rest, <laughs> garbage. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so this woman gets her arm chopped off in like a lumberjack related accident. Mm-hmm. And then she gets a golden prosthetic arm. Um, spoiler alert. Okay. Terrific. She falls in love with Spoiler it. Spoiler alert, she loves it so much that she falls ill and dies from pulmonary gold disease after refusing to swap the arm for a non-gold one. <laughs> <laughs> There's a great scene in which a doctor this is from <laughs> this is from uh, this is from GQ UK. Well, thanks uh, for spoiling that. <laughs> no problem. Uh Hang on. Okay. And it says, did I not say spoiler alert at the front? I you might did. have. You say spoiler alert and I'll put it back in. Okay, so, great. Did I say spoiler alert? Spoiler alert. Okay. Terrific. There are some great scenes in which the doctor all but warns her that her blood is more gold than iron and when she refuses to remove the arm, her husband, who let's remember loves her more than anything, simply shrugs as if to say, shucks, doc, looks like we've got to let her die then. Wow. It says I, this, this article also says I won't spoil the ending, so maybe something even spookier happened. <laughs> but anyway, this, this clearly surpasses any, anything that, the, you know, the best of Black Mirror. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so wow. that's, that's cool. That's, look, I don't look, even give know me enough of go a f- with that. I mean, any premise can be good, so right? maybe it's amazing. Yeah, I don't maybe know. It's, yeah. yeah, okay. That's cool. Anyway, we've got to move it along. We can't talk about Quibi anymore? No. Okay, all right, fine. You're going to get it? I might check it out. No. I'll do that thing about the 50 things that I said. I'll do that. Okay. Yeah. You'll, you'll release an album after, yeah. after every state in America? It'll be a freestyle rap album. Oh, that's really yeah. cool. Remember that's what I'm going to do or something? I yeah, said that yeah, at some I remember. Point. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. Uh, Sam Raimi has confirmed that he is doing Doctor Strange 2. Did he confirm that he's directing it or is he just involved somehow? You know what? Yes. I don't know. But I presume, <laughs> presumably, you're not going to say, I'm doing Doctor Strange 2 and he went, oh no, I'm, uh, you know, I, <laughs> I'm producing. I'm like, doing I'm, craft I'm coming services. In for a, yeah. <laughs> Look at all these sandwiches I've laid out. They're spooky sandwiches. They're just regular sandwiches, regular but sandwiches. you expect that from me, The Sam, expiry right? date's very close. Yeah. <laughs> so that's pretty spooky. So I, I presume. But yeah. Uh, uh-huh. yeah. So that's news that we sort of knew and now we know that it to be true. That's very of it. cool. Yeah. Do you think they're going to let him do the his Raimi thing? I hope so. Don't it, get him otherwise. Well, yeah. I mean, have, I, as I understand it, him and Kevin Feige have been friends for a really long time. Well, they both worked on Spider-Man there together. There it is. Spider-Man yeah. Trilogy. Yeah. yeah. So so you'd think he'd be like, Raimi, you can do yes. your thing. In a way. I mean, maybe this is, you know, maybe they're going to forge a different direction for the Marvel Universe. I hope now. so. Maybe they're going to be like, well, the first 20 were very much Favreau. Yeah. You know, they... they, they Favreau Whedon-esque. Exactly. They started out Iron yeah. Man style and then that sort of set the rest of the movies in stone yeah, and and pushed through 20 movies. So maybe this time around they're like, let's take it, you know, stylistically in a different direction. Or maybe they'll keep doing exactly what they were doing. Sometimes. Sometimes. Sometimes they don't. Uh, also, just quickly on the topic of the MCU, uh, I don't know, John Krasinski, who's doing his YouTube show, mm-hmm, said mm-hmm. like, this is the closest like, I'll get to play a comic book hero. When he showed up, some showed some fan art of him as an angel or something in a comic book panels. Okay, and then he did the Jim face. Oh, yeah, with. that's very good. Originally the Tim face. Yeah, mm-hmm, sure. but he uh, it's cultural appropriation. He took it. I don't know why <laughs> he's not in jail, but uh, so yeah, people are like, well, he's gonna be Mister Fantastic, oh. and I think he's it's a it's a matter of seconds before that guy is in what an MCU movie if it's, he's not it's already. It's astounding which he probably that he, is. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. it's astounding that he hasn't been. They were probably going to announce it at Comic Con, I'd imagine. So uh, he would have missed out on a lot of. MCU stuff. Well, he he's talked about how he's gone up for he went up for Captain America. Yeah. Uh-huh. And when he put on the costume, Chris Hemsworth walked past and was like, "Hey, mate, how you going?" And he was like, "And he, Chris Hemsworth is like huge and uh-huh. and cool and tan." Sure. He was like, oh, "This is dumb. What am I doing?" An Australian, obviously. an Australian, so, you know. Yeah. So, but I think Mister Fantastic would be a good role for him, and I can tell that from all the fan art. Perfect. Thanks. All this, whatever this angel character is. Yeah. No, it's just him, like 
I don't know, delivering good news, what he does in his show or whatever. Oh, I see. I can't okay, remember. I get it. Right, 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 right. Uh, the other thing is it's rumoured that Joss Whedon is coming back to do Fantastic Four. Ah. Oh. Uh, again, if that is true, that would indicate that they are taking this in a different direction because I know he was forced into certain things for Age of Ultron. Uh, people hate Age of Ultron. I think it's about as good as the first one. I hate Age of Ultron. Yeah, but I think that's the reason why it's not as good because it, it's about the same. It's mostly you know the I mean? same, yeah, right. Yeah. Uh -huh. But I think it's fine, honestly. Mm. Yeah, it's the it's the worst of the Avengers movies. films. It's oh, the worst, it's the worst movies. movies, yeah. It's one of the worst movies, Is it worse yeah. than Fantastic Four 2015? No, it's better than that. So it's not the worst movie. Speaking of, we finished all those, didn't we? We sure did, yeah. And then thinking that we were going to move on to the Bond franchise for Caravan of Garbage, uh -huh. it was winning. Yes, we we're ready to go. Uh huh. And then Scooby Doo shot ahead. <laughs> right. So now coming up for the next two weeks, the Scooby Doo live action movies. And you, spoiler alert, did not care for Scooby Doo two thousand two movie. Wow, well, all right. <laughs> not good. <laughs> You know what I did? Never done this before. Yes. Uh, I took out... I, 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 there's a moment near the start where I say, I fucking hate that movie. Uh -huh. And I edited myself Disney style to say, I hate that movie. Wow, you fur underpanted yourself. Yeah, I kept it in the extended audio one oh. because I figured this is a thing that kids are going to click on. So yeah, okay, that's the right, dad in sure. me went. I, look, call me a sellout if you, if you will, Mason. James, you're a sellout. I said, if you don't have to, like if no, you I will. was aware of that. I knew I didn't have to. I knew it was optional, but I decided. I looked into my heart and I went, "You are a sellout." You so. didn't even pause though. No, I've known for a long time. <laughs> okay, yeah. good. So that's yeah. been preloaded. That's been locked and loaded for a number of years. <laughs> just waiting for me to ask. Yeah, because you didn't want to just say it. I assume. No, I, I wanted to know. wait. Um, you know, yeah, it'd be weird if I just came out with it. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, that's coming up um soon. Cool. On Tuesday. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so anyway, Josh Trank. Is he back on Trank? Because Capone, the Al Capone oh, yeah. movie is coming to VOD May 12th. I, and obviously coming to VOD doesn't mean that it's trash. It's just the times that we live in. Mm -hmm. uh, the trailer looks good, I think. So we'll So what, what's the deal in this one? It's it's the it's after his criminal career, I think. And yeah, he's so in a nursing home. This isn't like um, uh, Bruce Campbell's Bubba Hotep in which he plays an Elvis Presley. <laughs> and then gets younger through magic? Yeah, and then he, and he, but he's in, a, he's in a nursing home and then a mummy is after him. Mm. This, is, uh, this is based on... I don't think it's like that. No. This, this is based on true <laughs> events. Okay, right. I believe so. See, I, I, it makes me think that I don't really know enough about Al Capone. <laughs> I, That's so embarrassing. It's Mason. very <laughs> embarrassing, right? Because look, all I know is he done a lot of crimes. Yeah, he did a and lot. And then of they it. got him for tax evasion. Yeah. So I'm wondering how long did he get in jail for that? Yeah, I don't know. I, well, I assumed it was life in prison. I can look it, it up. Lock, lock, yeah, please. Or do. you can, uh, or you can watch the movie. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, I'll just wait here till it comes out on VOD. All right. Well, you can't wait here, Mason. You got to go back to your home, obviously. That's true, yeah, so you're right. That's the thing with a lot of these gangsters are. Yes. They're so fucking ugly. Like, I know they wear the nice suits or whatever, but it's, Jesus. Do you think that's why they turn to a life of crime? <laughs> of the, just like slovenly, just... They all have boxers, noses, yeah. you know. <laughs> but I feel these days, like, it's easy to conceal a weird face because you can grow a beard or whatever. Cool beard, yeah. you, can't grow, you couldn't grow a beard back in Gangster Times. Yeah. You could, but then you'd have to be a weird mountain hobo, you know? I don't know. I can't. <laughs> okay, I think cool. Wikipedia is huge. All right, but okay. he killed a lot of people. Yep. And et cetera. Okay. And that's enough, isn't it? I think it is. Watch yeah. the movie instead of okay, me reading right. your Wikipedia synopsis. Okay, but the, 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 the general plot of this movie is uh, seems to be that he's, the protagonist thinks he's faking mm. this senility and he's, and he's got some treasures out there. Yeah. What's he yeah. got? I, I couldn't Just tell Just a gold like a pirate. Yes. <laughs> what I think. Uh, so the other thing is we've got a whole bunch of images for Dune. Or is it Dune? Was it June or June? It's officially dunk now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank goodness. <laughs> it feels good to have that settled. What did you think of the Capone images? Capone was convicted on three counts of income tax evasion in 1931 and was sentenced a week later to 11 years in federal prison. There you go. And did fined he die 50, in there? No, fined $50,000. $50, That's chump change. Plus $7,600 for court costs and was held liable for $215,000 plus interest due on his back taxes. Mm. The contempt of court sentence was served concurrently. Oh. Yeah. But you learn something new every day. You really do. Spoiler alert for that movie. <laughs> Do you reckon that'll be the end? We charge you $50,000 and $7,600 in court fees and also in back taxes. And he's and he, like, okay, will you take it from these big bags <laughs> with dollar signs on them? Yeah. And like, yeah. I guess, okay. <laughs> yeah. With blood on them? Yeah. <laughs> the, movie, the, movie is two hour, the movie is two hours and 11 years long. <laughs> so, And it's filmed from outside the prison. Terrific. Mm. Uh, so the movie Dunk, what do you think of the images? 
Looking good. Yeah. He's looking good. They're also splitting it into two movies. Looking bleak, but I feel that's kind of that's dunk for you, isn't it? That's absolutely dunk for Duncan you. Duncan Idaho for you, isn't it? Yeah, that this is it's, it's dunk's time to shine. He said it. He's the Han Solo of this movie. Did well, he say that? That's what he said. Huh. Mm. Which is weird because it's also got Oscar Isaac, who was the Han Solo of the Star Wars movies. Han Solo was the Han Solo of those movies, Mason. Mm, was he? I mean, for at least one and a little bit. Oh, all right. <laughs> So I'm really looking forward to this, and I'm torn because I want to cover. I feel the torch has passed from Han Solo to Han Solo. It's a, oh. it's a, it's a, it's a I, rank like James Bond. I know? think it's passed like a with a wry smile. That's, That's how it's right. Passed. right. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it's done. There should be a side story where, like, set in between the the original trilogy and the sequels, mm. where Han Solo attempts it to pass it to Poe Dameron but like Lobot gets in the way of the wry <laughs> smile and he becomes like a sexy swashbuckler for a while. <laughs> there's just like, you know, there's just, uh, just a movie where sexy alien girls are just like caressing, his, caressing his robot ears, you know? <laughs> and then, he, then he loses it. Then he loses his powers again. He accidentally gives it away or he does it for the good of the sequel trilogy. Ooh. I feel like he's he sacrificed himself in comics before, so I feel like it's in keeping. Oh, is he one of those... Uh, he was a normal dude and his things took over. Yeah, but yeah. is he one of those characters in the Star Wars that has died in multiple versions of the continuity? I don't think so. Okay. In the newer one, what happens is a great Lando comic. It's one of the best. It's by Charles Soule who did the Darth Vader run. But basically, uh, he gets injured and when he kind of when he's close to death, he's... His implants kind of take over. His robot ears, please. Robot ears take over. <laughs> They're technically called yeah. robot ears. So he was a cool dude. Oh, with yeah. With a smile, but then I took yeah, over. Okay, then. wow. Anyway, uh, June looks, junk, Dunk looks great. Uh, news from, in, from the J.J. Abrams camp, though, with HBO, these are some of the shows that have been announced. Duster. Wait, 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 how is J.J. Abrams involved? He's, he's got, uh, producing and uh, okay. writing he's, and And he's got a billion dollar deal or whatever. Yeah, yeah something yeah, like yeah. that. Okay. Uh, it's about a getaway driver uh, for a crime syndicate. It's called Buster. Duster. Oh, Duster. Yeah. I was thinking of the kids' comic, the kids' British comic book Buster, which I read. Is it good? It was, was dumb. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Buster's the son of Andy Cap, you know, the wife beating drunk. I didn't know that. Yes. Uh, so the other one was Overlook, a series featuring, featuring characters from The Shining. Okay, did yeah. Did you ever right. see Doctor Sleep? No, I never did. It's good. You should watch it. You I will. definitely watch it. I have a copy somewhere, I yeah, think. Yeah, great. It's also on all the streaming services oh, cool. at the moment. So, that's uh, handy. And the other one is a Justice League Dark TV series. Oh, yeah. That's all we know about that at this point in time. But, um, but HBO, that's confirmed. Sounds, that isn't, that's confirmed. That so isn't a that sounds, salacious rumor. Yeah, that sounds really good, to be honest. I'd be very happy with that. Who do you think is going to be on the Justice League Dark team? Uh, Constantine. Uh-huh. Dead Man. Swamp Thing. Satana. But they might throw in like a Batman or a... A regular Justice League member. Do you think so? Yeah. Just, really? Batman? Well, that's what they did apparently in that Justice League um, dark movie, animated movie oh, recently. Oh, yeah, right, right, right. We talked uh -huh. about it. We did, yeah. So that's the only reason I say that. I haven't okay. even seen that yeah, movie. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Like as an actual, like a, a continuing recurring maybe. character or maybe. just he appears every once yeah, in a while? Yeah, or maybe he's, he sets it up at the start and then he yeah, goes right, for uh -huh. coffee. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I do wonder if they would work in the Swamp Thing, uh, on, and, Swamp Thing and Constantine because you could. That's I don't true, know why. They probably yeah. won't, but I think... Both of those shows, despite being cancelled, were well received by fans. That is true, and for the for the performances alone, but also yeah. for the shows alone. Mm. Mm. So we, that means we're going to get another version of Constantine. Yes. So not the not the movie version, the Keanu Reeves version, and not the Arrowverse version. We're going to get an additional version. Yes. What do you so what'd you say? Be? The movie version, the Arrow version. What's the other version? There's. Those two versions. Yes. Well, he had his own, yeah, his own solo series. Because Legends that, of Tomorrow is the same. Yeah, guy, that, right? he got folded yeah. into Legends of Tomorrow. Yeah. Cool. I mean, he should be called Legends of Today right now because he's not from tomorrow, is he? <laughs> it's true. They were like, well, they should have had a discussion. Most of us are actually from today, so let's call it. Let's call ourselves Legends of 2017. Whenever this show started, or whatever. <laughs> let's call us. Let's call us the the cool current dudes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, so we all know how ExpressVPN protects your privacy, our privacy, and security online, right? Yeah, right. But wow. Wow. I know about it, and I've said wow <laughs> based on that information, but why don't you tell other people about it? Happy to do it, because there's something you might not know. You can also use ExpressVPN to unlock movies and shows that are only available in other countries. Hang on a second. 
Wow. Wow. Yeah. Obviously, a lot of us are stuck at home at the moment. So these are the kinds of things you can you can use for ExpressVPN. For me, I've been watching uh, Rick and Morty again leading up to the new series. Oh, I'm like, I'm going to get yeah. back in with these characters. Australian Netflix has Rick and Morty. You can switch it over to that. For example, also, if you want to watch How I Met Your Mother, Germany has that. Black Adder, UK Netflix. You flick the switch to whatever country you want to go what to. What I've been enjoying doing is mm. uh, listeners of our podcast have often tweeted at me, hey, being like, oh my God, you should watch this movie on Netflix. Yeah. I go to check Netflix and it's not on there. <laughs> so I can switch over and then watch exactly. it. So it's really simple to do. You just fire up ExpressVPN, the app, and change your location to the UK or wherever you want to go. Refresh Netflix and that's it. Wow. And what it does, ExpressVPN hides your IP address and lets you control where you want sites to think you're located, and you can choose from almost 100 different countries. I'm going to choose the nation of Venice. Yeah. Make people think I'm on a gondola. Yeah, but it's not a nation. That's a, it's not a nation. I'll do what I want because <laughs> of ExpressVPN. <laughs> so just think about those Netflix libraries that you can go through. Also, if you love anime, use ExpressVPN to access Japanese Netflix and be spirited away oh my with goodness. the great content and also the movie Hackers. But also Spirited <laughs> Away. I don't know if they've got hackers. But maybe they do. Check. Someone check. Uh, but also, it's not just Netflix. I've used it for a bunch of other stuff. ExpressVPN works on any streaming service. Hulu, BBC iPlayer, YouTube, you name it. I like that. I like that mm. a lot. You might say, I'd say, wow. Wow. Yeah. Uh, there are hundreds of VPNs out there, but the reason that we use ExpressVPN to watch shows is that it's ridiculously fast. And it's true. My internet is notoriously terrible, but there's never any buffer or lag, so you can just stream in HD no problem, which is terrific. Uh, ExpressVPN is also compatible with all your devices, phones, media consoles, smart TVs, and more, so you can watch what you want on a personal device or on the big screen wherever you are. If you visit our special link right now at expressvpn.com slash weeklyplanet, you can actually get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. Wow. It's a so, good deal. I know. It's a long amount of time. Agreed. Support the show and watch what you want. Also protect yourself with ExpressVPN at expressvpn.com slash weeklyplanet. It's also linked below. I love it. Me too. Wow's right. Wow. Wow. It's a duck saying wow. Wow. Yeah, I liked it. It's the only word he can say, but he that's, learned that's it. That's incredible. He learned it. it. Yeah, right. Because he's so impressed. Wow. Wow. Go on with it. Popular demand, it's back. Oh. <laughs> but we're here for another superhero showdown, aren't we? Exciting. We are. How, do, how does this work, this particular ongoing thing that we do? <laughs> the ongoing debacle that is the, the superhero showdown. Correct. Well, how it works is people want to know definitively yes. who would win in a battle between superhero A and superhero B. Mm. And we, as the ultimate authority on these kind of dumb things. Don't question. No, it's unquestionable. <laughs> We're qualified somehow. Yes. Because we've talked into microphones long enough. That's how it works, right? There's been so many episodes of this stupid show. <laughs> so how it works is uh, in the imaginary scenario, each hero or villain appears yes. at opposite ends of a standard size American football field. Once again, we do not know the dimensions of that. We've never been to one or even looked at one that closely. That's up to you, the listener. That's right. <laughs> These heroes or villains mm. notice one another, determine the other one to be a threat, yep. and attempt to defeat the other one by the means they would normally do so. Yes. There you go. They have all the equipment they would normally have on them. Correct. Uh, so, for example, if Marty McFly appears, yep. he's probably got the DeLorean. Yeah. If Mad Max appears, he's probably got the DeLorean. <laughs> but if Tintin appears, he probably doesn't have he's the DeLorean. probably got some sort of weird Belgian DeLorean. <laughs> It's no good. No. The wheels are in the middle of the car. It doesn't make any sense. It's powered by whatever they drink in as espresso in Belgium. <laughs> I don't know what that would be. I don't know. Probably what regular either. espresso, but with some sort of weird sip, probably put cinnamon on it or something. What are you up to there? Right? What are you You're up Belgian, to? Belgian. Let us know. Yeah. So we can make fun of it. If you could, if you wouldn't mind. <laughs> yeah. I had a thought also, if anybody wants to take advantage of our Express VPN sure. uh, offer. I think maybe what they should, the first thing they should do is everybody should switch to a different country. So all our download traffic is coming from the one country this week. Oh my god, I think that'd be funny. Belgium, I think it should be Belgium. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We should do that every week. Right, just really inconvenience people. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Anyway, uh, and and then the winner is determined. And as, as usual, yes, our decision is final. Unless you have a different opinion, in which case you are correct. Yeah. Please don't add us. We don't need to know. <laughs> we don't need to know. <laughs> 
Just feel safe in the knowledge yeah. that we would approve of what yeah. you think. That being said, if it's the YouTube version, go for it because the comment helps. <laughs> <laughs> Please do. Then argue to your heart's content. Should we do a different take for the YouTube version? So we had a kind of a running theme this week that actors who play different characters going against each other. So we've got a few of those, but it's not strictly that. It's just whatever. Should we get into it? This is from Max on Max. Uh, on the Gmail, weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com. Doctor Strange versus Smaug. Oh and my both goodness! Benedict Cumberbatch, both Cumber, joints. Cumber buddies. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, okay, that's interesting. Uh-huh. Well, Smaug, what what are his powers? He's fireproof, I assume, because he's a dragon. Yes, he loves hoarding gold. Yep, he sleeps. For <laughs> that's a, again, that's not a power. That's a that's a, it's uh, a trait. It's a trait. It's a like a, a weakness. It's a disorder. Okay, ultimately, sure. Ultimately, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh, he yeah, also, we call it billionaire's disease. Oh yeah, Scrooge McDuck has it. Yes. <laughs> So he's also sleeps for an extraordinary long amount of time. Uh So you're getting him in the middle of that sleep. Does he need a bit of time to awaken from his slumber is what I'm saying? Or is he snapped awake and he's ready to go? Uh, Well, I'm going to assume there's a very loud crowd around the football field. So he's he's up fairly quickly, I think. Do you think Doctor Strange would behead him with a portal immediately? You think Doctor Strange hasn't seen something like this before? Well, I mean, okay, so we also should should say it's it's these characters at the peak of their powers. Yes. So this is like... Unless specified otherwise. Yes, this is like Infinity War Doctor okay. Strange. So this means that it's Smaug who's awake and he's, and he's stretched. He's awake and stretched, exactly. <laughs> okay, That's right. okay yes. I gotcha. He's got a headband on. He's got sweatbands. <laughs> he's got a pair of brand new Nikes. <laughs> Two pairs of brand new Nikes? However many he needs. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what? He's got at least one and he's hoarding another one. That's true, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what do you think, though? Do you think he's just got to... He could knock his soul out of his body. <laughs> you think this is a short fight? Oh, Absolutely. Doctor Strange has fought a guy. Remember that Dormammu in another dimension? He died like a billion times. It's true, yeah. He's not phased by something like this. A regular dragon? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I enjoy the fact that you like regular dragon. <laughs> Wouldn't he be more inclined initially to be like, I should I should catch this dragon for study or something? No, you it's a threat. He'd okay. kill it. Straight away? He'd kill it. Okay, well, I guess then it's, d- it's down to how would he kill it? Beheading. Oh, maybe. He could make a million of himself. The dragon doesn't know what it's going for. It's Yeah, you're right. Because, I mean, I guess Smaug exists in the world of sort of Tolkien magic. Yeah. Which is, very, which is yeah, more like subtle. It's like bright lights and fire and exactly. stuff like He's that. Exactly. He's expecting yeah. Doctor Strange to summon a, an eagle and fly <laughs> away or whatever. And Strange is like, I'll just loop a ring around your head and shrink it so you, you, <laughs> yeah. your neck bursts. Exactly. Well, he could put him in a weird mirror dimension and leave him there. That's true. Yeah. yeah. I, I just, there's so many things that Doctor Strange could do. He could use that whip thing he does. Yeah. There's a million whips. Uh-huh. Yeah. He nearly, like he did pretty well against Thanos who could do literally anything. That's so true. this guy's not a problem. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So that's what I think. What if mm. Smaug sits on him? Yeah, but he wouldn't. What and he, he could just duck into a portal. I feel you're avoiding the issue. What if he did, though? Well, he just duck into a portal. He could it wouldn't duck be into a problem. Portal, yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. The only thing is you wouldn't want Doctor Strange to leave his body, leave his lifeless body <laughs> to do like some you know, astral nonsense, plane yeah. shit, which I don't think he would do. No. There's no reason he that he would do that. He just use lasers. He just use lasers. magic yeah. lasers. Exactly. I should also point out that a lot of mine are coming from Twitter, but also patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies. Taking Perfect. a lot of suggestions there. So if you want to, uh, well, you, you can get early stuff and whatever there if you, if, you, if you want. What about this one then? I'm ready. From Chow. Batman versus the T-800. Batman doesn't know it's a robot at first. How quickly do you think Batman would determine that the T-800 is a robot. The instant the batarang bounces off his head. <laughs> so he's going for the batarang to the head immediately? Yes. I think he could tell by like his gait. I think he's probably got like a glasses thing, that, like a detective vision. Oh, I see. Yeah, maybe. If we're yeah, talking right. like peak Batman, he's sure, probably... Sure, that's true. He could probably tell by like the indentations in, in the ground. Mm-hmm. That this guy weighs like 400 pounds. Sure. Yeah. And then he could, he could kill. That's true. Because yeah. he has no qualms with killing a robot. He's happy to do it. Yeah. Do you bat grenades. That, bat grenades. Remember that time he took out bloody... Um, it's, in, it's in the Under the head under the Red Hood movie. He and takes, Amazo. Takes out Amazo. I mean, he has, has helped with Nightwing, but Amazo is not... Amazo is much more skilled than a Terminator. I mean, I guess. Terminators are fast, though. Yeah, but Amazo's got, like, lasers and <laughs> magic and all sorts of... He's got Amazo like, lasers. You're yeah, right. Amazo lasers, yeah. Because Mazo has like the powers of various uh-huh. characters. But also, I feel like the Terminator could survive a couple of bat grenades. Yeah. And then choke Batman to death. If he could get his hands on Batman. Yes. Do you think Batman would go fist to fist with a Terminator? He no. doesn't get close enough to anything that can kill him, really. He tries not to. Emotionally? Yeah, what that's true. Yeah. <laughs> He's been burnt before. It's true. Am I incorrect in that? You're not incorrect. Yeah. 
Mm. And I'm not trying to just defer to that rule of Batman always wins, mm. even though he does. It's true. <laughs> but there's the reason is because I think he, he, he's got enough stuff on him and he's seen enough to know what this is. Bearing in mind, mm. the Terminator also probably has a gun. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You've but, forgotten that. But a lot of people have guns. Uh, you know, in front of Batman. Like, yes. Yeah. You think Batman's taken out the light straight away? Not that that matters with the Terminator, actually, because the Terminator is night vision. Right. Yeah. I think there's a longer fight than you think. Okay. Mm. So how do you think it's going to go then? Do you think? Do you think? Yeah, do you think Batman's getting in close? I do, know. Do you think he's going to go for a kick to the head or a sweep of the knee? I don't think he would. No. no. I think he'd know enough not to do that. Yeah. Yeah. So he's just using his bowlers and all his bombs. But see, here's the thing, though. What if he runs out of back grenades? How many back grenades does he have on him? Do you think he'd find a way to pry open the Terminator's skull to get the chip out? No, he doesn't have enough time. Yeah. <laughs> or money. Right. Actually, no, he has enough money. He's enough money, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, fair enough. Right. You don't think he could... Could he grappling hook him and like just tie him up to the goalpost? No. Terminator's no? too strong. Mm. <laughs> Was that naive of me? Yes. Okay, you're probably right. What if he got a grenade inside his mouth? That easily... could kill either of them, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you're... in that instance, whoever got there first would win. <laughs> you're right. I don't know. I just feel like Batman's got enough. He's probably he's also got tasers. You can knock out a Terminator with electronic charge. Which Terminator? All of them. Three, specifically, in Terminator 3. Do you think Batman... And that's the peak of Terminators. <laughs> that's true. Terminator well, exactly. 3. Peak Terminator 3 is the one that has the plasma charge. Yeah. Bombs inside it. Yes. So he's got at least two of those, bear yeah. in mind. Yeah. So he's got one but they don't to use kill them. Batman and one for afters. I was going to say, but they don't use them offensively, but actually, that's not actually true. Yeah. They do. That one in that movie does that exact thing. Yes, right, so do you you're think right. he'd waste one of them on Batman? I mean, who else is he? I mean, well, I guess Probably, I guess. I guess if... Also, I guess we, we have to factor in that if this Terminator doesn't have a mission, yeah. he doesn't really care. Yeah, right. About anything. <laughs> yeah, okay, sure. Right. But don't you think, though, he gets there yep. and then he locks on to Batman mm -hmm. and immediately he's like, kill. One goal, kill Batman. Yeah. It's probably true, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. I think even if he set off one of those things, yeah. I think Batman would not would be away from it. He, yeah. he's, he's, he survives explosions all the time. Yeah. And he's got that cape that can like ex survive explosions. That's true. Yeah. Also, bearing in mind, this version of the Terminator has tearaway stripper pants on. <laughs> of course he does. I don't know how that's going to help him in a fight. But mm. but he does. He does, it's true. It's important, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you could knock the glasses off him and he's like, oh, my glasses. Because that one really cares about glasses for no reason. Yeah, that's right. That's his one weakness. <laughs> yeah, I think it's Batman. I mean, it's probably still Batman, yeah. Yeah, okay. What's next then? As long... Look, here's the thing. Okay. As long as he's got the detective vision. Yeah, okay. I feel... And also, yeah, no, and it sort of depends on what era of Batman as well. Yeah. If it's the 70s Batman. Oh, no, there's, he's paced. That's not <laughs> even... absolutely paced, get it. yeah. Don't even worry about it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I feel maybe in future we need a different set of rules for Batman. Because you can... Oh, like pick a Batman. Yeah, maybe pick a Batman. Okay. Well, Just because... If we've got another Batman in here, we'll pick a Batman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. I can appreciate that. Mm. What do you got? Uh, this, is, this, is J this is from Jake Hall. Okay. This, this is a rare three-way, but I'm allowing it. Uh, this is uh, Taika Waititi's character in Green Lantern versus Korg versus imaginary Hitler from oh, Jojo Rabbit. Okay, who's, who's imagining Hitler? The kid, I guess. Yeah, Jojo. That means yeah. the kid's there. The kid is there, yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you have to kill the kid to yeah, kill imaginary? To kill, you have to kill the kid, yeah. But do you know that Hitler's there? Yes. But he's not really there. It's magic. Okay. Yeah. So Korg knows that imaginary Hitler is there. Yep. And he knows that he has to kill the kid to kill Hitler. Yes. I don't think he... Or knock out the kid. Yeah, okay. I guess. And what was the first one? Taika Waititi from Sorry. Green Lantern. <laughs> yes. What does he do? He's the best friend. He's, he's a quirky just, best friend. He's just impressed by Green Lantern suits, yeah. right? He's yeah. Impressed. <laughs> he's, impressed. he's impressed by Green Lantern suits and nothing else. Well, Korg's a, Korg's a rock monster. Yeah. With a club. But as previously established, Taika Waititi's character in Greenland is impressed by Greenland powers and nothing else. <laughs> yeah, but do you think a rock monster running at a boy, that's probably, that's, that's finished. Like, it, it, it kill, kills him or not, yes. that's not a fight. That's a trouncing, right? It is absolutely a trouncing, yes. Yeah. And the other one is a human man from 2010. <laughs> that's, that's exactly right. Who's impressed by... Green Lantern and, no Green one else. Lantern and nothing else. Yeah. yeah. So that's so that's yeah. Do you think imaginary Hitler has any abilities? No. I mean, you no. Know, he gives you confidence. Yeah. Okay. Or false confidence because he's a Nazi. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe Joe. Okay. Well, maybe Jojo. Jojo Rabbit also threw a grenade and blew off half his own face. That's true. He's not exactly 
win any awards for being great at throwing grenades. Yeah, if anything, I feel he would encounter you know the the the, the scarred rock monster of Korg. Yeah, and maybe they would they would they would learn to be friends. They'd form a bond. Yeah, and beat up <laughs> and beat up uh, Taika Waititi's character from, from Green Lantern. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Two yeah. on one. Yeah, never even thought of such three a thing. on one because they've teamed up with Hitler. Also, <laughs> okay, you're right. Wow, this is really turned. Okay, it's it's a resounding victory <laughs> for Korg, Jojo Rabbit, and an imaginary Hitler who team up to beat up. Look, I'll be honest, the devastatingly handsome Taika Waititi, and I'm sure that's why yeah. they're beating him up. Yeah, absolutely. He's very you know? tan in that movie and, and yeah. just jet black hair. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I mean, some would argue he's even more handsome now. Yeah, he's got a lot going on but too. But he was very handsome back during Green Lantern. Yeah. And, he, and he'd be there and he'd be very... He'd be. Here's the thing, he's handsome. Yep. And he's dismissive of anything that isn't Green Lantern's costume. <laughs> and so he'd be very, he'd be a bit smug and disdainful. Oh, yeah. He's like, this, I've seen a rock monster. I've seen a man in a very green outfit. Those guys are going to beat the tar out of him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, whatever your character was called in Green Lantern, Taika Waititi. It's neither here nor there. It's, it's irrelevant. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan White says, Invisible Man 2020. Uh, slight spoiler alert for that version. If you haven't seen it, you should see it if you uh-huh. haven't. And uh, versus Jessica Alba, Sue Storm. Oh, that's pretty good. Now, they're both invisibling. Yes. But one is in a very valuable suit. Yes. Where it's Chanel. We're talking about Jessica Alba, Jessica Alba right? <laughs> that's right, yes. Oh, is that what the suits are in that? No, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> I mean, just in a civvies. Yeah, sure. Mm. But what the thing about Sue Storm is she's force fields as well. That's true. That guy's not getting anywhere near her. Yeah. Well, here's the thing, though. I also feel like Sue Storm, Jessica Alba Sue Storm, as written, yeah. is a little bit naive. Sure, okay. And I feel like she wouldn't expect anybody else to be invisible. Oh, also, I wonder... The, here's the thing I wonder. Do they wonder. appear invisible when they get there? Is that what you're saying? Oh, well, that's a good question as well. Mm. well okay, you know, you're right. Because if they, bo- if they both arrive... I, okay, now here's the thing I wonder. Because Invisible Man 2020... Yeah. He's pretty much, whenever he's got the suit on, he's invisible. He's never not invisible. Until he, it gets damaged. Yes. Yeah. So, so he's going to show up invisible, yeah. whereas Sue Storm may not show up invisible. And maybe he follows her home. Well, maybe. Because that's what that guy's all about. That's his whole deal. But she can't go home. She's on a football field. But what I'm saying <laughs> she is... She can't go. Why can't she go home? Because that's how this works. <laughs> what I'm saying is that she would not expect anybody else to have invisibility powers. Okay. Because she's never encountered anybody else with invisibility powers. But he shows up, he's invisible. He's like, there's a woman. And, <laughs> and I hate her. that. Yeah. I'm yeah. not on board with this at all. Okay. So you think he's coming in for the kill straight away I then? Think probably, yeah. Yeah, you might be right, actually. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Here's the thing, though. He also doesn't have anything on him because he's invisible. That's true because all of the weapons he uses, he acquires They're throughout improvised, the... Uh, yeah. yeah. he's yeah. grabbing a knife. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, here's the well, and also he's so a, if he grabs her to choke her, she'll know that he's there. He's for, she's force wielding straight up. Yeah, right? he, she'd pop his head off. <laughs> yeah, I feel, what would? It, yeah, no, you're right because he and also also he's ultimately a coward. Does he know that she's invisible as well? That she can do any of that? Probably, Probably not. not. I wouldn't think so. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So he's got the he's got the advantage immediately. He's got the initial advantage. Yes, he's overconfidence. Yes, which is his weakness. And his suit that doesn't yes. work sometimes. Yes, exactly. And when on his first attack, yep. she force fields up and tears his head off. Pretty much. Because, I mean, as soon as he attacks her, yeah. unless he kills her in one punch, which I don't think he can, no, because he's, he's not, not super like strong, yeah. he's just a regular man and yeah. a coward, uh, <laughs> she would know that there's another invisible person there. She would be yes. able to see him. I wonder if she can see invisible things automatically. Well, it dep- I mean, she can probably see the things that are invisible the way she is. But maybe yeah, not right. a technolo- technology. But she can thing. see things that are invisible once she knows once she knows to look for them. Is that true? I think so. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Mm-hmm. Hmm. And I think she can make invisible things visible also. Yes. So this is a short fight. Okay. Yeah. And she can also so she can also like touch a wall and make it transparent. Yeah. So I don't know how that's handy, but imagine <laughs> if there was a wall that she could do that with. Oh. If he was behind a wall. Right, or behind uh, maybe a, uh, some goalposts. Yeah, yeah. Because that's where he's going to go. He's gonna, his <laughs> refuge is going to be some goalpost. That's true. And he's going to be like, whew. Do you think she's I'm go- in this weird <laughs> pocket dimension that is just a football field. Do you think also she's going to see the grass yeah. flattening as he's walking? Yeah. Yeah. She, oh, yeah. Mm. That's good. And also she doesn't have to touch the ground. No. The force field above the ground. But can her force fields be invisible if she's in the force field? Presumably, yes. They can, yes. Okay, good. Yeah. Mm. Terrific. Yeah. And she'd kill him. Yeah, she'd kill him. 
Also, Reed Richards is on the way. He's too late, though, because he sucks. <laughs> He's already, she's already done a murder. <laughs> she's murdered him. What do you got? Okay, this one's from Alexander. Okay. For this. The Great? Yeah, the, the, the Conqueror from hundreds of years ago. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. That's, that's who this is. Uh, it's, a, it's interesting how, how where he is of modern-day pop culture. Did he carve it into a wall knowing that this was going to happen? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he, he's also prophetic. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's good. <laughs> I don't know anything about the past, though, as we've previously established. You don't need to. Uh, here's a Chris Evans showdown. Okay. What about Captain America versus his character from Scott Pilgrim? Okay, Lucas Lee. Lucas Lee, yeah. Uh, strong. Yes. Agile. Yes. Multiple versions of himself. I feel like he's always got them on him. He's always got his entourage. Yeah. I would you so disagree too. with that? No, I would agree with that. I know it's kind of cheating. But he's, well, that, here's the thing, because that's... That's where, part of his powers. That's or, part of his powers and, yeah. and vague as they are. Yes. You know? Excellent skateboarder. Do you think this is the best, just, just ahead of time, do you think this is the best Chris Evans combo? I think this is the best Chris Evans versus. Do you think there's a better version of this? I think people would say like a Johnny Storm and whatever. Uh-huh, yeah, but yeah. I think, no, I think this is the best version. Because yes. Lucas Lee, both of these characters, their power set doesn't really adhere to the laws of physics, but in different ways. Yes. <laughs> Captain America has a shield that can basically do whatever he wants. He can just flee yeah. it and it'll come back to him or not, depending on <laughs> the time of day and the weather, I guess. <laughs> yeah. But Lucas you're... Lee is also... He's doing big comic book punches. Yes, and... exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And Scott Pilgrim is also an amazing fighter. Right. And he's able to best him. And the only way that he is being beaten mm. is through being tricked. Ego tricked. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you think he would have the upper hand on Captain America physically? Because he might, I think he's probably got, he's probably more enhanced than Captain America is. Because the laws of physics do not apply yes. to him. Yes, exactly. I think yeah. you're right. And yeah. he's got eight guys with him. Yes, that's true. I yeah. mean, Captain America has taken eight guys all day, any day of the week. Oh, right. That sounds, uh, you can take that whatever way hot. you want. Yeah, it sounds hot. But no, I think, do you think Captain America would be. Captain America also doesn't really have an ego the way that Lucas Lee does. Do you think Lucas Lee's that, all ego? Do you yeah. think he'd use that to his advantage? Uh, maybe. I think he could lure Lucas Lee into fighting one man at a time. Okay, because that's be like I thought you were, I thought you were cool and exactly. Tough. I feel I feel like his ego. Mm. He's he's a he is a he's got he's got the ego of a comic book villain. Yes, like a real traditional one. Yes, I he feel does. Like yeah. you could, you could, you could nail him down that way. He'd be like, you wouldn't dare fight me man to man. Yeah. I think he would. Well, so I guess those other guys, they're mostly cannon fodder, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Cause they're more, they're more stunt performers. They're right? more stunt performers. Yeah. And yeah. you know, cause Scott Pilgrim's able to take out like multiple versions of them, you know, yeah, yeah. fairly easily, not uh -huh. all of them, but he's, uh -huh. you know, and they're hitting him with skateboards and <laughs> yes, that's right. Whatever. How's he using the skateboard? Is he grinding off the goalpost? He's grinding <laughs> off the goalpost. Yes. But James. to what end? It just It's just impressive. Yeah, it is, I guess. It, it would wow Captain America, I feel. Captain America's shield also versus a skateboard. That's not... <laughs> they're not the same, but We don't they? know if it's a magic skateboard or not. Well, we see, like, they break, like, when he hits okay, well, and they're true. breaking on his <laughs> arm or whatever. Yeah, right, that's true. Do you think Captain America could bait him into doing a grind on the goalpost and then behead him with his shield? Absolutely <laughs> he could. Also, But also, would Captain America kill Lucas Lee? Because he's a movie star, he's not a... Yeah, because he's not killing a Batroc the Leaper, is he? International terrorist. That's true. Why would he kill this guy who looks like him? But is Lucas Lee a killer? I'm not sure. I don't know if he is. No, no, yeah, he probably isn't. I feel like most of the fights in Scott Pilgrim just end in a in a in a in a beat down and like a, and then Scott, a loss of honor. Well, no, because Scott Pilgrim kills oh, just, them because oh, oh, they yeah. all turn to coins. They turn to coins. You're I right. think a lot of those people in the, in those situations. But I guess they respawn somewhere else. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. But maybe it's also that I think they are trying to kill Scott Pilgrim because mm. he. I assume because he kills them. That is true. Yeah. You're so right. probably. I mean, uh, Jason Schwartzman kills him at the end. Yeah. Oh, that's back. right. He does, doesn't he? Yeah. And presumably the rest are also. Dead. Trying to kill. Yeah, dead and also trying to kill him. Yeah. Yeah. How do you mourn in the Scott Pilgrim universe knowing that maybe your best friend was killed and turned into a coin? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that. I think Lucas Lee is looking at Captain America like he could kill him the way that you would kill a video game character. Right, whereas jump Captain, on his head. Yeah, whereas Captain America is he's dur he's durable in a way that Scott Pilgrim maybe isn't. You're probably right, yeah. And he's got his... Shield for blocking. He does have a shield for blocking. <laughs> that's true, yeah. 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 Mm. I don't think Lucas Lee would underestimate him, mm. but I think Captain America could bait him into doing something stupid. Yes. And then he'd probably even accidentally kill him 
And then he'd turn to coins and he'd be like, I don't understand this. <laughs> yes. Is this a modern day reference? I don't understand. <laughs> but it's over and it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> and there's okay. nobody there to explain it to I him. I think it's Lucas Lee. Yeah, okay. What about this one? If we're talking Wait, it's Captain America. Yes. <laughs> doesn't matter, does it? No. Uh, if we're talking people from the But if I hadn't caught that, the answer would be Lucas Lee. <laughs> That's right. Adam Collins says, in the spirit of same actors, Austin Powers versus Shrek. And if we're talking Shrek at the height of his power, yes, we'll be talking about before he has kids. Because <laughs> <laughs> after that ruined. I think his, it's probably the height of his anger and power and strength is before he falls in love. Or oh, while like, he gets... Oh, wow. Yeah, because... What, <laughs> Someone's taking the red pill this nothing week. Nothing to lose. Uh-huh. But or, or... Oh, I see what you're if saying. If we're talking right. red pill then... It's after he gets heartbroken when he's at his angriest. Yeah, right. It's probably, yeah. And after, when, then he's yanked out of that and he's dropped into a field with okay. Austin Powers. And you're, he's saying, just, you're, you're just saying the height of fighting powers, yes. not the height of... But I'm saying what if... And look, I don't have kids. Yeah. Maybe he's like, well, I have to fight hard because I've oh, got okay. kids That's and I have a to go point, back actually. to my kids. Yeah. So now you have to make the decision. <laughs> when would you be more powerful? <laughs> if you didn't have any kids oh, or if actually, you were protecting your I kids? Would, I would... I'm I'm fitter now than I was before kids. Right. And I would de- I have more to lose. So I would say probably now. There yes. we go. Okay. Yeah. So it's after Shrek is it's had after kids. Shrek. I thought about it, you're right. The other thing is I think Shrek would also be not impressed by whatever Austin Powers is. He's like, I don't understand your references. <laughs> A weird British man in Union Jack <laughs> yeah. underpants. Yes. Shrek's also doing references. Oh, that's and true. And Austin Powers is like, I understand some of these references, <laughs> <laughs> but not all. Okay, so what era Austin Powers? Is this this is modern Austin probably Powers? Probably three. Okay, all right. Yeah. So not 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 uh, 1960s Austin Powers. No, because I think you'd also if the rules of love would apply uh-huh. and you've got to give him someone worth fighting for. Oh, that's as true, well. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Austin Powers also has a gun and Shrek does not have a gun. <laughs> but is Shrek bulletproof? We don't know. I don't know. Has he been shot by a cannon maybe in one of the Shrek movies? He's had an arrow in his butt, so I don't think he's bulletproof. Okay, right. But would a bullet kill a Shrek? Like a little Austin Powers bullet. From his Walther probably, or whatever probably, it's yeah, you reckon? Or it'd be like killing a cow. You'd have to hit it like right in the head. I'm gonna Google Austin Powers <laughs> gun and see what gun he uses, because okay. there'll be. I'll check the celebrity, the, the movie firearm da- database. Okay. Gun. I think it's like the James Bond gun. Yeah, it's a Walther PBKS. Yeah. Okay, right. Yeah, it is. There you go. Yeah. It's very Bond. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that'd kill Shrek. No. You have what? to factor in as well that we, when we imagine Shrek, mm. I guess we imagine him as a little animation, but he's a monster. He's huge. He's huge. He's, he's like, like eight, ten, he's like ten seven feet tall, feet tall maybe. Oh, okay, right, 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 right. Mm-hmm. He's, at least, he's at least six, six. I mm. would say he's probably close. He's probably more closer to seven. Wow. He's also insanely strong. That's true. But then again, Austin Powers, he's going up like against a fat bastard or like That's a weird true. henchman or whatever. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? But how does he ultimately defeat fat bastard? By relating to him. That's true. Do you think he would try that with Shrek? Yes. Shrek, like an onion. He'd be like, Shrek, we probably both have dad issues. And Shrek's like, my dad tried to eat me or whatever. We're both Michael Myers. We're both Michael Myers. We're Mike Myers. We're both, not Michael no, Myers. No, that's a different Mike Myers. <laughs> yeah, okay. I see what you're saying. Mm. So do you think they'd get to a point where they're both crying and, and drinking? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 And then Austin Powers would shoot him in the head. <laughs> well, that's the other thing is Shrek is not a killer, yep. really. Yes. Like uh-huh. he's 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 a lot of bluster, but he just wants to be left alone. That's true. Yeah. Whereas Austin Powers, yeah, big killer. Remember he the time killing's he, groovy, baby. Remember that time? Yeah, you remember that time he killed that guy with the steamroller? Yes. He could have stopped, but he didn't. didn't. <laughs> he <laughs> ran yeah. that dude right over. Yeah. Yeah. He's shooting henchmen left and right. So yeah. yeah, I think it comes down to the cold-blooded nature. So even if they relate to each other, yeah. Austin Powers would go. One of us is leaving here. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going back to Beyonce, quite That's frankly. That's right, yeah. yes. Or Heather Graham or whatever. Which we ever won. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Not the first one because she was a fembot. Oh, yeah, that's, that would be bad, yeah. Yeah, okay. So there we go, Mason. Yep, two in the back of the head for Shrek, I'm afraid <laughs> to say. Okay, here's a pretty good one. All right. This is from John Hatz. This is, a, this is a, maybe a deeper cut. Okay. Uh, this is the world's greatest actor showdown. Russell Crowe as Dr. Jekyll from The Mummy. <laughs> Love it. Versus Russell Crowe as six point, Sid 6.7 from the movie Virtuosity, <laughs> where he's all the world's greatest... Serial killers ser- or something? Serial killers and monsters and whatever condensed down into one 
artificial intelligence, but also he's put it, been put into like a nanotech glass body. Yes. In the real world. And eats glass to eats replenish glass, himself. Yes. That's correct, yes. Is there any glass on that field? Not on a football field. Wait, what's a goalpost made of? I'm going to Google that. Fiberglass, right? Fiberglass, probably, Does that yeah. count? Um... Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So he's eating that fiberglass. <laughs> if he gets injured, we don't know yet. Yeah. What are the powers of <laughs> Dr. Jekyll? Uh, exposition. <laughs> exposition, certainly. He's got a lot of glass jars filled with uh, <gasps> references to glass. future movies. <gasps> <gasps> oh, no, he's doomed. Dr. Jekyll doesn't even know what's coming at him. Like, he's used to, like, a supernatural being. But he's used to supernatural beings. Yeah, but he's not a supernatural being. He's a technological being. No, I know, but he, he, he's odd though, isn't he? Yeah. Have you seen a photo of him? Google a photo of him real quick. Virtuosity. Yes. Yeah, I know. I know what he is. <laughs> okay, I've right. seen the movie Virtuosity All right, okay. coming at me like I haven't. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> he also escapes into like a virtual world at the end, doesn't he? Maybe. Or something. He's like, I'm, I'm still alive. I'm a virtual boy. Oh, yeah. Not well, like the virtual well, boy. Well, there's no virtual boys on the, uh, on the football field. So Unless it was set in that. 1996. Yeah. Then there might be at least one. Well, okay. Just to be clear, <laughs> just to just to make this canon, this is you get transported back to 1996. Okay. Or so. Well, look, the only thing a virtual boy is being used for is the glass. He's eating the glass. He's out eating of the it. glass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah. And if he gets put in the cartridge, yes. Like if he escapes to the cartridge of the virtual boy, Doctor Jekyll will just put him in a jar of formaldehyde and he's dead. Exactly. So. And the other thing is, no one would ever use that cartridge on anything. <laughs> That's true. So he's just yeah. trapped in it forever. If yeah. he's trapped in a virtual boy. Yeah. It's true. Anyway, who's going to win this? Dr. Jekyll, uh, he, that guy's a serial killer. He's every serial killer. Six, and he's 6.7. Yes, and yeah. he's ex- insanely strong. I know Dr. Jekyll is. Dr. Jekyll also has to in- inject himself. No, that's to stop himself from turning. Yes. But even Tom Cruise. Even Tom Cruise, you say? Well, I was going to say regular man, but he's not. He's got the mummy powers. He's got the mummy powers. Some of at that point. Yes. Mm-hmm. And they're kind of one to one. They're both quite strong. Yeah. They're both very strong. How strong is a nanotech man made of glass? How yeah. strong is a, is is Dr. Jekyll? Has he got regenerative powers? He seems as strong as a drunk Russell Crowe would be. Wow, that's insane. Right? <laughs> but like peak Russell Crowe. <laughs> yeah. Like he's just he's done a gladiator or something. Yes. So he's peak gladi he's peak strength and also like the Cronulla Sharks have just lost at oh the rugby goodness. or whatever. Yeah. And so he's mad too. Yeah. Is that his football team? I don't know. Doesn't matter. Have Whichever you seen like have you seen the bod on Virtuosity Russell Crowe? Not that it matters, but he's also insanely fit. Okay, right. Outside right, right. of his glass based <laughs> abilities. Uh-huh. Yeah. Hmm. What happens when you punch Virtuosity, when you punch Sid six point? I think it like reforms or whatever okay, until he right. runs out of glass. Okay. But there's a lot of glass, as we know, in that yeah. football field mm-hmm. already. I'm yeah. sure people will write it and say, well, technically fiberglass isn't whatever. We say it is. We say we're blocking you. <laughs> You've been blocked preemptively. We probably blocked you for something else <laughs> earlier, many years ago. Yeah, okay. So hmm, I think it's virtuosity. Yes. I don't think Russell Crowe from The Mummy. <laughs> yes. He doesn't look at that That's guy. That's his official name, Russell Crowe from, from The, the Mummy. Mummy. Yeah, he may as well be. He doesn't, he sees that guy coming and he's yeah. not like, that's a Dracula. That's he's probably a like that's. A, he's probably if anything, he's probably like that's a curiosity. Yes. Mm. What kind of jar can I put this? We in? also really haven't factored in that a lot of these people are going to be like, why is somebody who looks a, a lot like me coming at me? We have to put that aside. I okay. Guess, for yeah. A lot I guess that's of, unless probably it plays true, yeah. into account. I yeah. You're yeah, probably the actual right. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Mm. Yeah. But I think it's virtuosity because. Do you think do you not? Do you not think that this version of Mr. Hyde is probably regenerative as well? Probably. Okay, here's what I also think, though. Yes. That version of Mr. Hyde is all about recruiting people to his side. Yes. He's got a speech ready to help those monsters in the dark and where the people... That oh, he's got to open with a speech. And Glass Boy just beheads him. Yeah, it's he's probably like, true, yeah. It's yeah. me. That's, that's, yeah, that's yeah. me. You're talking okay, about Okay, but me. I'm assuming that he's in Mr. Hyde mode. Yeah, he moment. would be. Yeah. yeah. But I think he'd still be able to behead him. you think he'd him. do the speech. No, I'm saying you think he'd still do oh, the no, speech. Oh, no, he probably wouldn't. He wouldn't do the speech. Yeah. He'd be like, hello. You know who I am. Yeah. And Virtuosity was like, hey, maybe. Do you think? What if? Okay, he's okay. I'm gonna. I'm be willing to give it to Sid six point seven unless yes. Sid spills his pint. <laughs> like maybe he's been teleported in from the. Pub. I think you're putting too much of Russell Crowe's own personality <laughs> into these characters. That's probably true. <laughs> but he's what? Like he is. I mean, it's just Russell Crowe. He's mo- mostly just Russell Crowe. But that the version of that in the Mummy, he's he's very he's very intense. Yeah, he if is. you recall. Yeah. I All right. Remember. I'm getting. We'll, we'll give it to Sid, Sid 6.7 unless yeah. there's a pint involved. Yeah. Okay. There might be. There might be. Yeah. What about this one for people who are the same? Mm-hmm. Lee Wilson says Raiden from Mortal Kombat versus Connor McLeod. So that's Lambert v. Lambert. Yeah. yeah. Lightning v. Lightning, he's written. 
I mean, of a sort, sure. Of a sort, yeah. But I mean, Raiden can use lightning all the time. Yes. The God, the God of Thunder from the Mortal Kombat universe versus uh, Connor McCloud from the Highlander universe. But if it's Connor McCloud, yes. do you take him at the end of Highlander 1 where he's won the prize? Oh, and he's mortal again. He's Probably in... not. <laughs> <laughs> but then in later movies, he becomes immortal again. Yes. So do you take him from that or do you take him from when he's, there's still other Highlanders left? and he? I think you take him from then. I think you're taking yeah. from the one good Highlander movie, Highlander 1. My um, understanding of Raiden is one of his... Except for Highlander 4. Highlander 4 is good also. Uh, yeah, well, that's what they... And some of the TV series, Yeah, right? TV series is good. It's on Amazon Prime if you haven't seen it. I have some of it, okay, maybe. Right. Maybe I haven't. Mm-hmm. We've talked about it at the very we least. Have, yeah. Mm-hmm. One of very Raiden... French. Yes. Because of French tax credits, probably. <laughs> to kill a Highlander, you have to behead them. That's correct. One of Raiden's... Well, no, that's not true. You can kill a Highlander, but they will come back unless you behead them. Yes, okay. Yeah. One of Raiden's fatalities... Your head explodes. Is, his head explodes. Yes. Is that a Highlander killer? Yes. Does he also have to get him on the ropes to do the fatality? Presumably. Oh, okay. By the <laughs> rules of Mortal Kombat. But it's true, yeah. I think you should, yes. But also, we've seen Raiden in cutscenes do stuff that, like, kill people, not just, not at the end of a fight. Well, here's the thing we've got to factor in. That's the that's sort of, if we're going by the rules of Mortal Kombat, he's only as good as I am at playing Mortal Kombat, which is not very good. Or he's only as good as the, the, the movie Mortal version. Com- yeah, I think he's the movie version, yeah. yeah. And he I doesn't th- even go to the tournament, does he? He's like, I can't enter this realm or for whatever reason. Yeah, probably. I don't yeah. really remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they're like, reptile, and we have to watch that. <laughs> remember that <laughs> Look, bit? I feel, okay, I, I feel like in this instance, because also... Generally speaking, when uh, an immortal kills another immortal, yes. they get them on the ropes and then they cut their head off. Yes, because the it's in the in the highly the universe, it's usually against the rules to just shoot somebody <laughs> and then cut their head off while they're dead. It's it's rude. It's yeah. considered rude and bad. But there's people in that universe who would do that, right? Oh yeah, of course. There's a yeah. bunch of them. Yeah. 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 Okay. So do you think Raiden would shoot him in the head and then <laughs> take his head off? No, I don't. Oh no, because I feel like he's very much because he's all about the Mortal Kombat tournament. Yeah, it's true. He would have shut it down a long time ago. He would have called in some inspectors, probably. <laughs> some interdimensional combat inspectors yeah, to be you're like, right. this doesn't this isn't up to code. Let's shut it down. <laughs> We're finding you, Shao Khan. That's what he'd do. But he seems to be on board. He's like, the rules are the rules. So I think both of them would follow the rules of you get the other guy on the ropes and then you kill him. Yeah, okay. So I feel yeah, like this, right. this this would be quite a fair fight. But yeah, but would it be fair? Because one has a sword yes. and is Mostly man based in yes, terms of his abilities. He's mostly man based. Yeah, but true. Like, but Connor McCloud doesn't have magic beyond regenerative abilities. I mean, he's stronger and faster than a normal man. Okay, but is he stronger and faster than Raiden? But then again, who is stronger and faster than anybody in the Mortal Kombat universe? Well, like Liu Kang is like he's a guy, but is he? Right, but also he's magic. Traditionally, also. Raiden is a god, but he puts himself into human form in the Mortal Kombat tournament. Okay, sure. So he's he's human, but he also has lightning powers. Okay, gotcha. So he's he's probably he's as durable as anybody else in Mortal Kombat. Okay, fair enough. So do you think they've all? Which is a stupid move, in my opinion, because <laughs> you could just show up as a god and kill everybody. Because then what Raiden doesn't realize is he has to fight Goro, right? And you got to do a bunch of jump kicks just to you keep just that guy at a distance. Kick him constantly, yeah. Right. <laughs> as I found found out yeah. recently. And then yeah. Shang Tsung turns into Goro. It's a nightmare. <laughs> Um, so I think it'll be a fair fight towards the end. So it's I, one one guy's got a sword and one yes. guy has light. He can shoot lightning and also do that Superman move across the screen. That's true. But he goes, the "I am on a man." Exactly. Yeah. 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 It's a good game. <laughs> it's a good game. Yeah, man, it's good. Uh, boy, this is a tough call. I think it's Raiden. You think it's Raiden? Yeah, he probably. I think he'd be surprised. Like he might. He might kill him and not realize that he had killed him completely. Right. But when he comes back, he's like, I'm going to do one of my fatalities. That's true. Because he'd go to leave and he can't leave because the fight's not over. And he's like, what's going on? He turns around and Con McLeod's alive. Well, here's the thing also. Raiden can only kill somebody after one round. Uh, after two rounds, Connor McLeod can kill somebody after one round. It, it, you would kill Raiden if you beheaded him, right? Yes. Could a sword, just a regular sword, behead Raiden? I yes. presume it could, right? I would say so, yes. Maybe he'd think he killed him. And then Connor McLeod gets back up and beheads him. Yeah. And I feel like Connor McLeod would go, this is probably a Highlander because that's the only supernatural thing that I know. Yeah, right. So uh-huh. I got to behead him. Mm. And he doesn't have a sword, so that's going to make this much easier. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> Look, I'm not, I'm not super... I'm, I wonder about that because I guess... I think the Immortals are only allowed to sword fight each other. Like they Only allowed? Well, I, th- I think you can't... Well, Raiden just... is immortal. No, I know, but I think the idea is you can't come up to somebody who's unarmed 
like if you're a man of honor, you can't just come up to somebody who's unarmed and be like, "I'm going to cut you to pieces." Okay, sure. I think, yeah, but I think you're right. I think if Raiden killed him, yes, then Connor McLeod would. I, I imagine Raiden would go lightning bolt through the chest, like straight that, up. That would be number one move, and that would kill a normal person. I would think. Yes, but it wouldn't. It would only kill him temporarily. It would t- kill him temporarily, and he get back up again. Yeah, because none of Raiden's opening moves are beheading. <laughs> That's true. That's true. But he is he is stronger than a regular person. Yes. Could he probably take a lightning bolt and it wouldn't go through him? Because I feel like it might be able to. I think it would go all the way through him. Okay. Well, he does, actually, because bullets do, don't they? That's, yeah. He's been riddled with bullets. We see that in the yeah, movie. Yeah. yeah. But I don't, also don't think Raiden's lightning bolts are proper lightning bolts. They're not like from the sky lightning bolts. Because he hits like normal people with That's them. That's true. He'll hit like Striker. He'll hit a dog that comes into his yard. He'll hit a dog in the yard. <laughs> Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Well, um, maybe it is Connor McLeod because Raiden is dumb enough to put himself in a human body and go into a tournament. He's constantly being tricked, <laughs> have you noticed? Yeah. He's being tricked by all the villains. And he's always like, you're never going to believe there's the greatest threat that ever Shang Tsung is back. And no one's like, didn't we deal with this? Isn't this <laughs> yeah. your job? Yeah. <laughs> this right? is the one thing that you have to do. Aren't you, haven't you been around since the beginning of time, Raiden? Yeah. What are you, what are you doing Did you here? even start this tournament maybe? I don't know, yeah. the more of Mortal I Kombat. Think I think it might be Conor McLeod. I think he would go for the beheading early on. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Because all you have to, here's the, because also, generally speaking, in the, an immortal will wait for the first available opening and just go for the beheading. Yes. So this, Regardless of who it is. Yes, I think so. Yeah. Do you, so Sean Connery, Connery in those movies was eventually going to have to fight Christopher Lambert. Correct, yes. And they were like, cool with it. But they were yeah. like, we'll stick together because uh, bros before other Highlanders. Yeah. <laughs> As the expression goes, yeah. right? <laughs> bros before immot- immortos, <laughs> which, is, which is what you get. That's the prize. It's, being, it's your immortos. That's so cool. It is cool, right? Yeah, it's cool. I like it. It's Connor McLeod. It's Connor McLeod. Okay, I'm with that. Also, you could probably bait, um, you could probably bait Raiden with some like, some witty banter. Some light homophobia. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> what, do you want to go on a date? I remember yeah. that movie. Yeah. It's a good one, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, this is more, uh, this is the same actor, but it's also the same character, just okay. at different points in time. Oh. Uh, Nishit says, Thor versus Fat Thor. Right. So is that Thor, Thor, one Thor? Is that peak Thor? Probably in terms of confidence and abilities. Maybe I'm- Dark World. No, I think peak Thor is Ragnarok Thor. But he doesn't have... Oh, you mean with all his lightning abilities? Yes, that's peak Thor. Okay. Yeah. But peak fat Thor has both Mjolnir and the that's other axe true. thing. The other axe. Yarn's Blorn or yeah. something? And it also... Yarnborn. And it also <laughs> seems like... No, it's like, Yarn's Blorn. It also seems like, even though in Ragnarok, Thor's like... They're like, Thor, you didn't even need your weapon. You could... You, the power's within you. Yes. It seemed like he really did need those weapons. <laughs> right. Ultimately, right? Uh Uh-huh, sure. So do you think Fat Thor is then just cutting through him? Good question. Could Thor summon the hammer? A regular Thor? Yeah. Yeah. Who's more worthy in that case? Fat Thor's got more humility, I feel, right? That's true, yeah. Been through more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like it would probably... Or or would the hammer go to who needs it most? (laughs) That's a really good question. it's kind of vague. Isn't it though, yeah. And depends on the universe. the, The inscription says... Whoever holds this hammer, if he be worthy, shall possess the power of Thor. But it doesn't say anything. Maybe if you turn it the other side, there's a, there's a list of like... Uh, there's a weight limit? There's, there's a weight limit and a waiting list. <laughs> like it explains, it explains the queuing system for Thor's hammer. So it's like in the event if there are two people who are both worthy to possess the power of Thor and they both happen to be Thor because <laughs> of some sort of time-related situation, you go into a queuing system, uh, but if, you summon, if, you summon, if you've summoned the hammer... But then you summon it again. You go immediately. You automatically go to the bottom of the queue Obviously, again. So don't yeah, summon yeah. it twice in a row. Yes. Um, but it's only the two of them. It is. So the nobody's other. outside the field summoning the hammer. No, that's true. maybe if Captain America's there, it goes to him regardless. Do you but think he's, he's more there. worthy than yeah, both probably, of them? Yeah, probably. In a lot of ways. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Because he is the most humble, isn't he? Isn't that the idea? It's behind not hum- how humble you are. It's part of it, though, isn't it? No, but it's wor- humility. No, no, but I think it's but it, it's it's worthiness as a warrior. But it's I worthiness think. also in terms of the person that you are. And Captain America is one who's he's at the start of those movies. He's getting beaten up in the alley by a bully, and by the end of that, he's fucking king hitting Thanos with a <laughs> magic hammer. That's like, true. His journey is incredible. Yeah, yeah. And Thor puts on some weight. Like there's that's a true. big difference, but I think that's it, a different discussion. That's also that would also be a funny what if scenario if if 
weedy Captain America is fighting. <laughs> weedy Captain America is fighting a bully in the alley, and all of a sudden Thor's hammer comes to him. What would he and do? he just clocks the bully into space. <laughs> That'd be fun. That'd turn the tide of the war fairly quickly, I would imagine. I'd imagine so. Yeah. Yeah. He did it with some muscles. Imagine what he could do with a yeah, magic hammer. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, look, okay, so I, I, there's no Captain America. It's just, no, obviously. It's, just, it's yeah. Ragnarok Thor versus Fat Thor. Yeah. Uh, Ragnarok Thor, I feel, is more rage-filled. He's got so much regret and loss. Mm. But he's also um, he's damaged. Right. Like he's got PTSD. But other, but Fat Thor is drunk. That's what I'm saying. Fat, <laughs> yeah, yes. But, he's, but I don't think... I think he's he summons his suit and he's not drunk. Like your alcohol would just burn out of his oh, system. Oh, you think so? Okay, yeah, right. I don't think that would matter. Huh. Yeah. Okay, right. Mm. We've got to figure out a system of worthiness. Because I don't, also <laughs> don't think that's how it works. I don't think it comes to the person who's more worthy. Yeah. I think if you pick it up and you... I think if you grab it and you're worthy, you can pick it up. Oh, you can't just summon it from... No, I don't think it's a more Because some people think that Captain America summoned it. I think he picked it up. But some people right. think because you don't see it that he summoned it to his uh, hand. Oh, yeah, right, right. Yeah. I think he picked it up. I agree. Yeah. Okay, well, let's let's say that then. Yeah, right. But what are the rules? Can, can we establish a definitive rule for if two people are fighting? If two people have the ability to summon a hammer, yeah. it's in the middle of them. Who does it go to? Is it a, is it a contest does it break? of break? Is it a contest of wills? I don't think it is a will thing. Do you, does one person get the handle and one person gets the mallet? Which would you prefer? The mallet. Because yeah, I could use it half a brick style. <laughs> yeah. Would it shatter if they're both calling it to Probably. each other and they're both Thors? Probably. Yeah. Mm. Yarnborn, anybody can use Yarnborn. Oh, that's cool. As well. Because <laughs> nice. even Thanos uses it. That's true. Does that also come back to you? What do you it have does, to- yeah. Okay, right. Yeah. You can but who summon. does it come back to then? I think this might be a fist fight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because what's going to happen is they're going to fight over the two weapons until they both break. Yeah. And then it's just going to be a fist fight. I don't think Fat Thor having any weight on him makes a difference. Because no. he's able to flip a car and fly and do whatever with the hammer. Yeah. I don't think it I don't think having sixty pounds on him makes any difference. I don't think so either. And we that's kind of proven in that fight where he's not gasping for air. Yeah, exactly. You know, right, he's, yeah. he's he's fighting at like the same ability that he always yeah, has. Right, right. He, if anything though, he's probably rusty in terms of ability that's true. Just from not fighting. But mm. I don't think his strength is would be diminished yeah. significantly. Also, they're probably both lightning proof. Yes. So that's really, that's out of the question as well. Yeah. This is really... A, it is a fist fight. When you factor, <laughs> when you really boil it down, it's just a fight between two regular guys. Okay, sure. Because they yeah. both have the same strength level and they both have magical abilities that won't work on each other. Is which the, means it's just, it's the equivalent of two blokes fighting in a car park. <laughs> is the weight an advantage or a disadvantage? Because maybe it's an advantage. You've got a bit of shock absorption there. That's true. So he's hitting you and you're not, it's not going straight to your organs. Yeah, that's that true. Kind of buffer. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Do you think either of them would tire? I think if it's like two regular guys, you would, because yeah. they're both at the same strength level. That's true. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred ton punch each way. Yes. Yeah, you're right. Okay. The only way to settle this is we should get two. We should go to like, like the the nearest liquor store yep. and get two guys to fight in the car park. Just two regular guys. And we need twins, and one of them's fat. Right. <laughs> That's what we need, really. Okay, we know those guys. Oh, we do too. <laughs> I don't want to talk to those guys though. So, <laughs> all right, let's let's come up with a, with a definitive winner then. It might be Fat Thor. I think it is. But he's, he's faster too. Is no, he? No, Thin uh, Thin Thor is faster. I don't think it matters. Yeah, probably necessarily. doesn't matter. Yeah, because you know it's not always the fastest person that wins. Yeah. Yeah. I also think that Fat Thor is so angry. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, so yeah. angry. Yeah, and he's also got a massive chip on his shoulder. That's true. From destroying half the universe. And I would also say that, yeah, and Ragnarok Thor is Infinity War Thor yes. in the sense that he doesn't go for the head, but yes. Endgame Thor definitely would. Yeah. So I think he's he's more likely to be a killer just killer, to be on the yeah. safe side. He'd probably be like, this is some Thanos illusion or whatever. I better yeah. kill it. And the other one's like, this is some Thanos illusion. Better leave it alone. Yeah. <laughs> better, better pull my punches for some reason. Yeah, for some reason. Terrific. What else? Oh. 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 All right, I, I don't know how much we're gonna we're gonna get out of this, but I thought I think it's interesting. This Love is from it. this is from Caleb. Okay. Uh so it's Wesley from The Princess Bride. Yeah. Versus Robin Hood from Robin Hood Men in Tights because they're both oh Carrie God, Elwes they characters. Are. I'm well. If you, I don't really know a lot about Robin Hood from Robin Hood Men in Tights, so I'm willing to sub in his character from Saw. <laughs> Pre so or Wesley. post? Is he is he chained to the goalpost? <laughs> yes, he's chained. 
goalpost and he's got a saw there. <laughs> okay, but what's he using it on? The saw could cut through a fiberglass goalpost. Think so? Yeah. Yeah, eventually. But he's getting stabbed before he gets through that, isn't <laughs> By he? By Wesley. I don't, I don't know if Wesley would kill him. Yeah, he would. Oh, actually, he's not really a killer, is he? He's more threat. I mean, he's killed a lot of people, presumably. Well, we don't he is know the dread, that. He's the no, Dread Pirate Roberts. But the, lot of, the idea behind the Dread Pirate Roberts is you're not really that terrible. Yeah, it's true. It's the, it's the myth of it that kind of yeah. propels people to be scared and hand over their trinkets yes, and their golds. Uh -huh. And, you know, he fights Andre the Giant, yes. chokes him out. He fights that Master Swordsman, knocks him out. Yeah. Poisons that little dude. He absolutely kills but him. But not yes. his fault. Right. To be fair. Yeah. And the guy from Saw... He's terrified, obviously, right. yes, yes. <laughs> because he always is. So we're abandoning Robin Hood in this. No, nah, let's 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 put Robin Hood in. Okay, I don't remember much about that Robin Hood. Is I mean, he's got all the Robin Hood stuff. Yes, he's a, he's a, like a ridiculous shot, but more so because he's parody level Robin Hood. Right. Yeah. Well, we have got to factor that in. Yeah, he's, definitely. He's, he's like a cartoon man. Is he a killer? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, then it's probably Robin Hood. Yeah, that was that was pretty quick. Yeah, and he can fire projectiles. Yeah. But is Wesley yes. knocking those down? Maybe he is because he's just that good. It's a great swordsman. <gasps> Princess Bride is such a good movie. It is a good movie. It's a good movie. And Wesley's like, guess what? I'm not left-handed. And Robin Hood's like, that's fine. Not an issue, really. <laughs> I think Wesley's a better sword fighter. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wesley? Westley. Westley. It's Westley, yes. Websley. No, wrong. Websley's Dictionaries. Mm. Okay, I understand that. Do you think Robin Hood would be in fear of Wesley, the Dread Pirate Roberts? No. Does he know who he is? Doesn't give a shit. Don't, you don't think Just so? Just a dude in a mask. I He's a dude so. in a green hat. Doesn't matter. <laughs> it's true. Doesn't matter to him. Yeah. It's irrelevant. Do you think Wesley could avoid Robin Hood's arrows it's long Wesley. enough? It's Wesley. <laughs> so <Sorry>, good. <laughs> <laughs> it's Wesley Stipes is his name. <laughs> Sorry, what were you saying? I was saying, do you think do you think Wesley's fast enough to avoid those arrows? I think he could knock him out of the air with his sword. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm. He's quick. He is very quick. He's doing judo and flips. He's remember? Doing, yeah, I remember he does judo and flips. Yeah. He gets on Robin Hood's back. He rides him like a like a like a <laughs> buffalo. Also, he climbs that rope like hand over hand. Yeah. Up yeah, a yeah. mountain. Like that's insane. Yeah. No legs. He does it just arms. That's true. You ever done a rope climb? No. They're very fucking difficult. <laughs> I probably have. <laughs> I don't believe you. Yeah, right. <laughs> but so he's, he's, he's insanely strong. That was the previous Meso, the legend. <laughs> he passed on all those stories to me. I've never done a rope climb. Well, normally you do the foothold. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah. You twirl it around. Yeah, yeah but he doesn't do that. So yeah. that's, so he's all, he is a fantasy character also. That's true. And he'll kill a rat. So I guess he is a killer. Yeah. Kill a big rat. You're right. We don't really factor in because the, the legend of Robin He also Hood. died. <laughs> And came back. Yeah. yeah, you're right. I mean, he didn't bring himself back, but no. we know the pain that he can endure. Yeah. Mm. What we oh, that's say? true. Yeah, he could probably survive any number of arrows to the chest, yeah. probably. Mm. Not the head. No. Robin Hood's not going for the head, though, is he? Not comical Robin Hood. No. That's not funny. No, that's, that's true. Hit him, in the, hit, him, hit him in the balls. Hit, hit him in the balls. That's funny. That is very funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Makes a sproing sound. Makes a spring. Might have a comical boxing glove on <laughs> yeah, the end of right. that arrow. Yeah. You're right, Yeah. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Mm. I like that one. I like it. I, I think it's, uh, I think it's Wesley. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wesley Snipes. Yeah. Um, this isn't two of the same character, but I like it. Josh Owen says, "An army from Lord of the Rings versus a man in a car." <laughs> <laughs> so this is peak man in a car. Okay. What does that look like? like okay, then? we've got to. Okay, first of all, we've got to define a, a, the peak Lord of the Rings army. Which is the best one? Is you would, it, is you it would it know the better Arukai? than me. Oh, the half orc. I was, half assuming, I was assuming human army. Oh, okay. Or like you know, like the allies. They've, yeah, well, if it's a peak army, they've probably got elephants and right. catapults and. Yep. But how do you hit a car? Exactly, it's moving. <laughs> it's moving too fast. But if catapults got, were invented before the car, if it's peak army and you go okay, let's say it's any 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 army. Okay. The, well, if they've got elephants, yep, you, you'd sweep a car over. That's true. They're not called elephants. They're called. Like a slight variation on that. Like Tuskatrons. Tuskatr <laughs> the Tuskatron 2000. That's right. Yeah, that, they'd sweep a car straight mm. over. Yeah. And I feel like a car, it would be, be a guy who's showing off his four-wheel drive, four drive on Instagram. Oh, yeah, right, he's, right. You know, he's got he the... Start, he's open, opens <laughs> with the donuts. Yeah, exactly. But here's the thing, though. I Would, would an elephant mm. fear a car? I think it might. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. They're not, and they're, but they're also much bigger than regular elephants. They're they like very five big, times yeah. the size of. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I would say let's make it a regular human army. Okay, right. Okay. okay so fair. like your uh, 
Okay, let's say, have a regular human, regular good guy army. Yep. So it has elves and it has sure dwarves and, and people. And people, yes, yeah. normals. One dwarf. One dwarf. Okay. There's really a magic one. guy. Do we give a, put a wizard in there? Yeah, but to what end? Yeah, you're right. Okay, no wizard. Yeah. No, I mean he should be there. It doesn't matter. But Gandalf. Gandalf Gandalf's not stopping. He's summoning. A car. A, he's just. Oh, summon. that's means he'll stop like a big fire dragon. And he could very easily summon an eagle to just go through the windscreen. Yeah, or pick up the car and drop it into a volcano. Let's say Gandalf isn't involved. Okay, fair okay, enough. Right. We'll make it interesting. Yeah. I think you'd only get so many people deep before your your car stops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what's your plan? You drive into the middle and they smash the windows and drag you out and quarter you? Yeah. Mm. I think you'd kill like 20 people. Right. Yeah. This is quite reminiscent of, of uh, Ash in Evil Dead 3. But right. The Deadite <laughs> army. He's got a car and a gun. Yeah. But this guy doesn't even have a gun. No. <laughs> Maybe he has a gun. Yeah, right. <laughs> in, his, in his glove box. How do the army... And also because the armies of, of Middle Earth, mm. they attack sort of Braveheart style, like swarms. Sure. Right? You can't stop a swarm of men with a No, with a not car. with a car. No. Maybe if you had eight cars. Maybe if you had eight cars. Exactly. But it's not eight cars no. versus an army. No, it's a yeah. one man in a car. Yeah, I think also they'd be on the bonnet. They'd be smashing the windscreen yeah, yeah, with yeah. The, like the butt of the... Their swords and whatever. Exactly, yeah. They put an You'd arrow be doing, in. The, the man would be doing Instagram live. Yeah. He's not expecting any of that. Like, you, an elf would get on the roof of the car and be balancing and shoot an arrow through the roof and the guy mm. would be shot in the head. Yeah. So I think he'd kill, like, maybe 10, 20 people. Yeah, right. But also, what's the terrain? A bog? <laughs> They're fighting <laughs> on a bog? It's a bog or, like, a craggy mountain and there's yeah. lava. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's, if anything, that guy's just going to fall into a, into a pit of lava, I think. Yeah. That's why I'm saying four-wheel drive, though. Monster truck? It's not a regular car. No, though, you're, is not, it? you're right. It's not a regular car, but that's peak car, though, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I guess it is. That's peak peak car and peak man. Do you think they'd the run? The peak car is the Undertaker. Yes. And the peak man is the Undertaker, <laughs> <Do> you, <laughs> the wrestler. Do you think people would run as the car comes in? Yes. Or, yeah. They'd like kind of pass. Initially, I think that, yeah, I think they yeah. would, yeah. Mm. And then they would riddle it with arrows and he'd die. Yeah, they would, yeah. yeah. Mm. That's right, yeah. What else? Okay, here's another one from uh, car related. Cars. Uh, this is Will Duncan. He says the possessed murderous car from the Stephen King book Christine versus Kit from Knight Rider. I don't know much about Christine. Do you know much about Knight Rider? Yeah, yeah, it's a magic car, whatever. Um, it's not magic. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's a Hasselhoff version, right? Yes, exactly. Yes. Yeah, but not the other versions because there's other versions. Mm. Um, okay, so what can Christine do? Christine's a murderer. Yes. I'm gonna look it up. Is Knight Rider a murderer? I'll be honest, I don't know anything about it. I don't think I don't think Knight Rider is a murderer. I think Knight Rider also needs like the, the go ahead for things, right? No, he can operate on his own. Yeah, but he needs like permissions to do like ma- he's not He he's needs not, permission to shine. You're yeah, right. but he's not like he's not so he's not stopping crime by himself. Like he oh, needs, he's not going out there on a, his own. He needs a prompt to be like right. meet me around the corner or whatever. <laughs> you know? Meet me around the corner or whatever. Right, uh, sure. <laughs> His famous activation phrase, meet me around the corner or whatever. <laughs> yeah. I think Christine, what's that like, got the ghost of a... I'm going to look up Christine the car. Okay. Look, I well, I'll look not. up Knight Rider while okay. you're doing that. Okay, here we go. Okay, I'm ready. It's got a computer AI, obviously. It's got an alpha circuit. Oh my God, which of is, it uh, I don't know, it doesn't matter. That's irrelevant. I just read that and I'm like, it doesn't <laughs> matter. But it can control his turbo boost function, which oh, I think hello. is important. Mm-hmm. It's got a molecular bonded shell. So yeah. it's armored. Yep. Mm-hmm. Which I think is going to play in. Uh-huh. It's got pyroclastic lamination. Oh yes. So it's a thermal resistant coating. Okay. To withstand temperature. Uh, the power. Christine, s- the car has been on fire. So that's true. Mm. Uh, it's got a. It's got like its power systems are off the chart. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, it's got a turbo boost, as mentioned. It's got a voice, which I think is distracting. It's got a voice projection, uh-huh. so it can project his voice from. Uh, at another position. Oh, yeah, bit of uh, bit of ventriloquism. Exactly. Car ventriloquism. It's got an ana- anamorphic equalizer. That's the thing on the front. That's the front thing. Yes. I don't know what that does. It's a scanner and it can scan wavelengths and Correct, X-rays yes. and infrared. Uh-huh. It can hear sa- like special sounds and stuff on uh-huh. different wavelengths. Okay. Uh, it can smell. <laughs> okay. It's got micro. But it's got no nose. How does it smell? Of oil. Like a car. Yeah, it smells like a car. <laughs> My micro scanners for tiny audio and visual uh, sensors. Mm-hmm. Um, it's got cruise control, auto control, pursuit, super pursuit. It's got pursuit. Pursu- How do you like say a nice pursuit. pursuit. It's got a nice pursuit. <laughs> mm. it's got oh, a s- so it's got a, a trunk full of nice, a nice pursuit. <laughs> Does it sell it at a market, maybe? <laughs> it's got, not at the moment. Yeah. It's got silent mode, oh. which I think is important. It's got a grappling hook and winch, important. It's got oil jets and smoke screen, important. It's got an induction coil, Ooh. so it can produce from under the front car 
and 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 remotely induce an electric charge. Oh. It's got a flamethrower. It's nice. got a tear gas canister. Oh. It's got ultra magnesium charges. Bloody hell. So magnesium flares. Uh-huh. It's got high traction drop downs. Uh-huh. Don't know what that is. Oh, it's for off-road. It's got a telephone comm link. Oh, my God. Wow. Uh, it's got a microwave jammer. Not kind of relevant here. Uh, it can lock the brakes of other vehicles with a micro lock. Nice, but what about a spooky car? Though? Yeah, a spooky car without electronics? I don't think so. Probably not. Uh, it's got surveillance mode, traction spikes, infrared tracking scope, a laser power pack, a bomb sniffer, a medical scanner, a tinta- tintable windows, deflatable tires. I think that could come in handy. Mm. A fuel processor, a voice stress analyzer, seat ejection system. To what end, though? I guess you could shoot Hassel off into the car. Uh, <laughs> passive laser restraint system, video display monitors, computer printout. Oh, dot uh, matrix. Dot matrix. Money dispenser. Money ultra, dispenser. Ultraphonic for a bribe. Ultraphonic yeah. uh, chemical analysis analyzer. Do you think it would maybe analyze the spectral forces? Maybe. Oh, I could do. Yeah. Uh, interior oxygenator. Two wheel ski drive. Third stage aquatic synthesizer. So underwater. Oh, nice. uh, emergency braking system. And convertible roof. Wow. Well, <laughs> if I can counter that, Christine is a 1958 four door red Plymouth Fury that a high school dork named Arnie Cunningham purchases from George LeBay for $250 in 1978. This is from the Stephen King fandom wiki. Love it. It is a fancy car with <laughs> white, white brim tyres, white wall tyres, double headlights, and white trimmed rims, but it is also wrecked and in need of serious repair, so he repairs it. Uh, Christine can come back. Like if, yes. if you if you blow up Christine, Christine reforms because Christine is, is. What do you need to do then to destroy Christine? Let's find out. Let's go to the end of the movie, Christine. Go. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, you attack it with a bulldozer. Yep. Uh, you smash it. You crush it into a cube, and then yep. you get drop. You drop her into a junkyard. Okay. And then at the end of the, the movie, Christine, it's assumed that Christine is going to repair herself again. Yes. Yeah, right. So you'd have to separate the parts. Yeah. Oh, that's probably, it's true. But would Knight Rider have enough, would Kit, sorry, yes. have enough implementations and technical specs to know that that's the case? Or is he think he's won? Because oh. I, I also think once Christine smashes Knight Rider, yes. Kit, Kit doesn't reform. Yeah, but I don't think Christine, Christine isn't as durable as Knight Rider. Or because he's got the hyper alloy super. Knight Rider could straight up just charge straight through Christine, yeah. I think. Like not even slow down. He'd go right through her. Yeah. That was the hallmark of Knight Rider back in the day. Is Knight Rider is basically indestructible. Okay. So you just go th- just go through Christine, I reckon. And that's it. Well, she'd reform, I think. And then he'd do but it. But he's again. got a winch. He's got all sorts of stuff. He could probably you know what he, he could pull them apart. He could pull her apart and put one one that's on true, one. That's true, because it would come back and then he's like, Oh, I need to yeah. So I'd run through it again and then I need yeah. to do this properly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I was having a laugh before, but this time <laughs> let's get serious for Well, once. I mean, it would open because, again, you're right. They perceive each other as a threat, but I think the kit would just be uh, getting, like, bumped, like Stampy, <laughs> like Christine, the haunted car, and he'd be like, please, stop, please, don't. stop this, please. It's embarrassing. Stop this. You don't like this. Yeah. I don't like this. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. Yeah, yeah. see, the, 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 you know, Christine, a, 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 a powerful antagonist. Mm. You know, in in a world where you're a regular meat based human, yeah, obviously very dangerous. But in a world where you're an indestructible car, not as dangerous. Not as dangerous, I okay. would say. Yeah. Well, this is my last one. Or they fall in love. Yeah. Maybe that's what she needs. Nah. You don't think so? What do you want to do? What do you want to do? Like have car babies? <laughs> maybe. Well, not everyone who falls in love wants to have kids. So yeah, maybe not. That's true. This is my last one. It's from Justin Brown. Okay, I'm ready. This is a short fight. The Mandalorian versus Carl Urban Judge Dredd. Two guys, helmets don't come off. And one guy is a really good shot and one guy is like <laughs> mostly struggling to get by through the entirety of his, in the of his Disney Plus series. <laughs> he's very tenacious though. He's tenacious, but he's a goof. He is a goof, it's and true. And Judge Dredd is a fucking murderer. Yeah. Like straight up, straight away. Uh, he's not a murderer because he's working with the bounds of the law that he's invented. So <laughs> <laughs> You're right, the, sorry. The, the, the law of he's his an ult- executioner. He's an executioner in his in his society in the society that he's uh, that allows that entirely. I think there would Judge Dredd appearing would say, identify yourself, take your helmet off, and it would just kind of escalate from oh, there. Oh yeah, for sure. Because he he doesn't Judge Dredd does not take no for an answer. He'd no. say, remove your helmet, the Mandalorian would be like I won't for vague religious reasons. And Judge Shredder will be like, well, I'm going to shoot you because not removing your helmet in the presence of a judge is instant death or whatever. Yeah. And obviously he's got the, the armor yep. that it would bounce off. 
Oh. But I think he'd find the spots. He's got also that gun is insane. Well, I mean, if this is this is traditional comic, well, which which Judge Dredd are we talking? I, well, Carl oh, Urban. Urban Judge Dredd. Yeah, he's got he's that that gun. He's got, got a hot got, shot. He's got he'd armor. shoot it under the armor piercing. Yeah. he's got probably let's assume, shakers, I can't let's remember. assume though that it cannot pierce. He cannot pierce his armor. Yeah, but I would think he'd put it under the helmet and shoot it straight into his head. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and the Mandalorian's got like a grappling hook. Does and, the Mandalorian have Baby Yoda? Well, often he does. He often does. That's the thing. That does change things Changes a little bit. Changes things very, yeah, very quickly. I was hoping to wrap that up, Mason. <laughs> <You're> really <laughs> <bad>. <laughs> well, too bad. We're doing another 10 minutes. Yep. Okay, so Baby Yoda's got like one charge in him. That's true. It only works once, but it's very effective. Yes. And it can it can hold a big buffalo type creature yes. in the air long enough for the Mandalorian to shoot it. Stab it. Stab it. Yes. Right? <laughs> Still a tag. Mm. Do you think if you got Carl... How, how, how handy is Carl Urban floating in the air... Let's say he gets his gun away from him. Yeah. How dangerous is he? How dangerous is who? Carl Urban, Judge Dredd. If he's floating in the air without his without gun. Without a gun, he's not that dangerous, I don't think. You reckon? What's he going to do, swim through the air? Maybe. I guess it depends <laughs> what, like if, if Dredd, I guess it depends what the char- the one charge Baby Yoda has. Yeah. Like if 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 Dredd is like, you're a, you're a baby operating a floating baby carriage without a license, the sentence is death, yeah. and shoots a bullet at baby Yoda. Dredd's not shooting a baby. He probably would. <laughs> <laughs> and baby Yoda, Yoda stops the bullet. Yeah. That maybe that's his one charge. You know? Yeah, okay. Mm. Yeah, you might be right. And then yeah. he's done. Yeah. But I mean, Dredd's, Dredd with no gun, floating up in a bubble, useless. Dredd with no gun versus the Mandalorian would still win. <laughs> right. There's no way he's losing that fight. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah. He's insane. Yeah. He's, oh, yeah. He's, he's tenacious. There's a The Mandalorian gets out of things because he's got friends and luck. Yeah. But also, the, Dredd probably has a second gun. He's, he's almost just, certainly he's got a second ne- gun. He's just never had to use it because <laughs> no one's ever disarmed him. So, <laughs> Well, isn't it if you disarm a judge, you automatically have to retire? From, Even if he's floating in the air, he's not letting go of that gun, is he? No, that's true. You're right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Mm. It's Dread. Yeah, it's Dread. It's, yeah. it's Baby Yoda or no Baby Yoda. Yeah. yeah. Big love, finish. Love that movie. Yeah, do you want to finish on that one? Yeah, let's finish on that one. All right, great. Okay. Well, look, thank you very much to the people who contributed. We obviously didn't get to all of them because we got hundreds, thousands yeah. potentially. But we put them into a database. Yeah, and by what... a database, I mean they're in Gmail somewhere. <laughs> that's right. And I Googled and I, and I looked. I searched for Showdown every, every time. And you did it. Yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, thank you, yeah. Thank you again to those people who sent those in. We'll come back to this, no doubt. We do it every six months, every year. I don't know. It's some of our more popular episodes. We've lost it? track of time. We don't know. Maybe we did it last week. I honestly don't know That's anymore. That's true. And every time we do one of these, I have to Google the last episode to figure out what number we're up to. So right. I have no idea. Maybe nine. Who knows at this Maybe. point? Maybe every time I'm on uh, our friend Dave Warnicky's podcast, Book Chief. Great Book Chief podcast. He will ask at the start of the episode what you've been reading lately. And before I go in, I have to listen to his previous episode that I was on, <laughs> just in case I was re- still. I'm still reading the same book yes. that I was reading six months ago. Because it's such a good book? Yep. That's why I'm rereading it. <laughs> yeah, good, I'm not good. that slow. I'm not a slow reader. <laughs> no, sir. No, sir. Well, do you know what it's time for? Oh, is it time for what we're reading? What we're going to read. Oh, my God. I'm doing the thing. What are we reading today? <laughs> my goodness, Mason, what are you reading? Uh, I just watched uh, Code 8 on Netflix. Oh, I, you know, I just looked at that before yeah. we... Um, so Stephen Amell and Robbie Amell? That's right, the Amells. The Amell the brothers. Super Amell brothers. <laughs> <laughs> they've, they've put down their plumbing tools and they've turned their hand to mov- movie making. <laughs> Terrific. But strictly speaking, uh, seriously, seriously, folks. Seriously, seriously, it's, seriously. So it's Stephen Amell, so that's Green Arrow from Arrow. Yes. And... Uh, Whatever, is, whoever his Places brother plays, tomorrow and <laughs> whatever, all that, yeah. Yes, uh, and they they got together and they made a movie, and I think they kickstarted some or all of the budget. Yes, it looks really good. I I've heard it, I've heard good things. Yeah. What do you What do you think though? It's pretty solid. It's pretty. Uh, it's pretty pretty. It's pretty. It is pretty. Mm. Like it. It doesn't look cheap. As, yeah. Uh, and I think they've they've been very careful about you know minimal number of sets. Don't don't. Work within your budget. Work within your budget. Yeah. Don't work with without your means. It's not a. It's it's a superhero sh- movie. But yes. It's not a Galactus level threat. It's not a Thanos kind of right, superhero okay. movie. Yep, it's yep. it's sort of it's like Bright. Let me finish. <laughs> it's in that it's set in a world in which I think at the early twentieth century people started developing superpowers, minor oh, okay. superpowers, and they've been sort of used as a labor force. 
to 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 build the city that okay. they they're yeah. in or whatever. But now that the city's built. Everybody, you know, all their descendants are sort of second class citizens now. Right. Okay. And cool. They, and okay. they kind of they kind of work as like day laborers and stuff. Like Robbie Amell's character yeah. has electric powers, so he's he basically like works in construction because he can work on electrical systems while they're still alive. Yeah. Okay. Like he can basically work without any s- safety rules. So it's essentially like instead of you being heightened by your superhero abilities, they're yeah. basically used as working class and yeah, exactly. Kind of. oh, yeah, that's yeah. interesting. And yeah. so and they're sort of but you know there's. There's their are they actually brothers in this or are they no they're unrelated cousins? yeah they're not they're not related. They don't mention anything. how they look similar and have nope. the same names. <laughs> no, nope, absolutely not. But they are referred to as Robbie and Stephen Amell <laughs> in, the, in the movie. So pretty wild. Yeah. But basically, you know, there's uh, there's electrical guys and fire guys and strong guys yeah. and telepath guys and etc. The X Men guys. Yeah, exactly. And 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 Robbie Should have called it X Men guys. <laughs> Code eight brackets X Men guys. <laughs> And and Robbie Amell, and Robbie Amell's character, uh, his his mother is she's also has superpowers, but she's you know she's got a, a brain tumor and they can't afford the, the yes. surgery and blah blah blah. So maybe has to turn to crime. And like it it it's pretty basic as far as the premise goes. Yeah. And it's kind of like oh no he's he's a good he's a good guy but uh, maybe sometimes you got to do some bad things kind of thing. Yes. That. But it's it's I think it's really well put together. Okay. Yes. Out of ten, what do you give it? Seven out of ten. That's pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Well, I actually watched Red Dwarf. Oh, the, the Promised, Promised Land. Land. Okay. Uh, VPN, by the way, if you want to be oh, doing that'll that. That'll do it. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. Nice. So, I really liked it. Now, if, so the the premise of this, if I recall, is yes. so in the show mm. where they're all trapped on the the spaceship Red Dwarf, Cat, the character Cat, is yeah. a descendant of Lister's cat who was pregnant Frankenstein three million years ago. Yes. In the in the the hold of Red Dwarf. And they've evolved. They've evolved into human-like cats over millions of years, and then they all left Red Dwarf. Yes. And now they're all back? Now they're all back. Okay. That's right. So it's kind of this, and Lister, or as they call him, Cloister, and this all ah, yes. this all goes back to like the first episode ever in the 80s. Mm-hmm. He's, they think he's this deity who saved them, you know, which and some of that is true, but he's not a god. He's a man, obviously. He's a man. And it's, it feels a lot, a lot of the time like the, the classic Trapped on Starbug series. Oh, yeah, okay. Because there's a lot of time he's spent on Starbug away from Red Dwarf. Red Dwarf, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mason. Yes. Uh, and the callbacks are quite good. Like there's some nods and some more obvious stuff, but they do things like they cycle through a bunch of Rimmer's looks oh, yeah. over the years. And he even at one point defaults to being black and white, which is what they originally wanted oh, for the show. Good. But I they like couldn't it. they couldn't do the effect on, yeah, on right. the television. Huh. And I just really enjoyed it. Like it's if you're a fan, you're gonna get way more out of it. If, if yeah, you're right. watching, you're gonna be like, what is this? What kind of funny is it? It's like, what do you mean by that? Like, is it uh, is it cheesy funny or is it kind? Of, it's is a it, bit of cheesy funny. Is, is it there a laugh track? Yes. Okay. It's not as good as it's ever been. Right. But it's as good as it could be now. <laughs> okay, does, right. that, does that make sense? Yeah. That and works. I honestly, I really liked it. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm, but, gonna, I'm gonna get know, onto it. Yeah, yeah. So you should. I on in Australia, you can get every series on Stan. And I've looked Was at it. Was that on Stan yet? And I, no, I it, uh, that. the the newest new one isn't. No, okay, yeah. But uh, all the other ones are, and I'm like, oh, I'm like two seasons behind, so I'm going to catch up on those maybe this week. Yeah. And then watch The Promised Land, I think. Yes, absolutely. Oh, and it turns out, I read an article this week, uh, it turns out that the Rimmer in this is original Rimmer. Yeah, how is that, though? He must have come back. So, so if you recall, yes. original Rimmer, well, mm. not original Rimmer because he's dead, Yes. but original Rimmer, the hologram, he became ace. He became the new ace rimmer, and he left for dimensions unknown. Yes, some some series ago, and then in and the season after, the season after, original rimmer was resurrected using nanobots. Yes, uh, but he's gone now. Dead. Original yeah. rimmer came back. But how? So hologram. It's never been explained. Yeah. But the, the, the that the makes sh- sense because he has the memories of everything else that yeah happened. of rimmers that he shouldn't have. Yes. So, but the the show Doug Naylor, who's the remaining showrunner yes. on the show, the the original creator, one of the original creators said he's the original, but we're basically not going to explain it. We might, but he's like Yeah. No. I like the idea that uh when he left, he just kind of circled Starbug. Yes. Cuz he's a coward. And he didn't really he didn't really go out on adventures. He oh, just okay, right. hung out. He's just been following behind yeah. for for years. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Absolutely. Yeah. Anyway, uh, do you know what it's time for now? Is it time for letters? It is time for letters. letters. It's time for letters. Oh. It's horrible we fade in Mason. No, that was a great fade. We're going to hear right now. We're going to do letters. Terrific. If you do want to reach the show, hashtag weeklyplanetpod on Twitter or weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com. 
Do you have a letters for us, Mason? I'll get a letters for well, us. Why you got a letters for us? I'm going to go to XX Giggle McStink on Twitter. That's a great name. Hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. Just watch The Fugitive with Harrison Ford and Tommy Lee Jones. It was a lot of fun. Any thoughts? Uh, I prefer the follow up US Marshals with Wesley Snipes. No, I don't. It's a bad movie. Fugitive's good. I haven't seen it since it came out. Yeah. Or I think I was probably too young to watch it at the movies when it came out. But I you I haven't s- seen it since it was on the TV on in the channel 90s. nine. Yes, on <laughs> channel nine, probably at eight thirty on a Wednesday. Yes, so many ads would have gone till eleven probably. He didn't kill his wife. It was a one armed man. Oh, that's great. Didn't have a gold arm though. Do you remember it was also a series? Like they remade it as a series in like the early two thousands. Sort and, of. Yeah, because and US Marshals was supposed to be like. You know, you love the fugitive. What if the team from the fugitive took down another fugitive? Yeah. No, thank he was you. like a special forces guy. He was like Wesley Snipes. It's he was not doing... as interesting. Yeah. You know, because you want like the fugitive to be like a guy who's like Harrison Ford, regular man. Right. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And he's got a beard and you're like, this guy's got a beard. And then he shaves his beard and they're like, who is this guy anymore? <laughs> How did he do that? What's his secret? He's disappeared into the, into the crowd. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. So no, I like the fugitive. I should watch it again. Uh, Harrison Ford has done a lot of exasperated kind of dads. You know what I mean? It's like, oh God. You know what I mean? Is he an exasperated Family dad man. himself? How many kids does he He's have? He's got a few kids, yeah. Is he? Yeah. Do we know anything about him? He's got, he had, I know he had kids when he did the first Star Wars. Right. And he may have had some kids since, but I don't know. All right. Yeah. But maybe he hasn't. Wow. These kids are all grown up because he's 150 years <laughs> sure, old. Oh, yeah. Obviously. yeah. They're all adults, right. But it's interesting that. we've never seen, like, we. it's interesting that, you know, because, like, uh, Carrie Fisher's daughter is in the Star Wars. Yes, it's odd. That it, it's not odd. I mean, maybe they were so odd. It's. I mean, it's 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 completely understandable given Harrison Ford's experience in Star Wars that he might have said to his kid, "Don't, just don't be just actors. Don't, I'll just give you money. Yeah, <laughs> just. What do you think of that? Yeah, yeah. So no, he's got five kids. It seems. So there you go. There you go. So he had two children with his first wife, two children with his second wife, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then one child just showed up. Uh, and together. Um, they adopted a son, Liam, oh, in 2001. Nice. So there you go. This one's from Coleman. Hello, Coleman. Thanks th- 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 he's not here. Oh. But I'm here. Oh. You can say hello to me. Oh. You never do. Oh. You can say hello. Oh. Come on. No, come- oh, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> anyway, Coleman says, hey, James, and that other guy. Hey. That's me. Yeah. He's, sa- he's saying hello to me. I know. He didn't use my name, but still. <laughs> Uh, he says, I've been going through some tough times this past year with a transition into college. Congratulations and dealing with depression. But I just wanted to thank you guys for always being there for me. Not literally. Obviously, that would be weird. <laughs> but for real, your podcast never fails to make me smile. And it feels like sometimes you guys were the only friend I had on some lonely nights. So keep up the good work and keep shooting that red hot comic book news up my butthole, please. Happy to do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, college can be tough, man. You tra- yeah, move, yeah. It's just a whole different lifestyle and, and then just, pressures. And, look, yeah. everything's tough right now. Yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, that's true. So you, I mean, I wasn't trying to belittle his problems, by, but you saying everything's tough. So everyone's got problems, is that what you're saying? Yeah. This guy isn't unique in his problems? No, he's very specific. He's unique in his specific problems. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, Excellent. Yeah, yeah. no, yeah. glad we could help in a way Yeah. by shooting Red Hot Comic Book News. Yeah. A lot of people email in, they're like, oh, thanks for helping out. And I'm like, well, you, I don't know if we helped out. I think you've solved your own problems, but <laughs> yeah. it's but we, nice. But you were listening to us during some of that. It's nice to be droning in people's ears while they solve their own problems. Boy, you know? is it. Yes. Yes. All right, all right. Yeah. Uh, I've got one more tweet. Okie dokie. I was just going to say, was, mm. uh, I just remembered, uh, This did we mention it last week? Rob Collins, the great Rob Collins, at oh Rob Collins, he put up a hate mail. He animated oh, the yeah, hate mail. Oh, yeah, I meant to put that, say that up top again. Well, you didn't. Yeah. You didn't, you fool. Nah. God but damn anyway, it, God he put up, it. he put up a 10-minute animation. Yeah. Uh, about, it's, a, it's a hate mail segment that was all about uh, the oh, movie Rambo when, yeah. we, when we re- reviewed the most recent Rambo movie. Incredible. Really good, yeah. It's animation, leaps and bounds, would you say? He's so good at everything. I don't understand it and I don't like it. Me neither. Right? Let's block him. Let's block him. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's terrific. Uh, this is from um, yes. James Jander says on hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. Not sure if uh, this has been said, but how do you guys feel about Miles Teller returning as evil ultimate Reed Richards from the ultimate universe in the MCU? You know, and they get John Krasinski for Reed 616. Uh, I like that idea. I like that idea too. Bring him, just make use of that terrible dimension. I mean, look, they've they've the Marvel universe, the MCU currently has proven in Spider Man Far From Home that they're not above using not above, but they're not they're not they're averse. Not below. They're not <laughs> they're not averse to using yeah. actors from the previous continuity in, in that kind of way. Yes. So I I mean, yes, but especially since the that version of Reed Richards was meant to be, you know, in that weird 
Lovecraftian yeah. horrible universe. Like that's yeah. I wouldn't you know, he doesn't even have to be like the ultimate Marvel universe. No. Just he's from a universe that seems to be grimmer and weirder and more Cronenbergian, yes. Cronenbergian than than the regular MCU. Yeah, and it's been destroyed, and he's turned into this horrible, evil version of Red Richards. Bring him in. Why not? It's been destroyed because he destroyed it by accident. He probably did it by accident. Yeah, by yeah. being too boring. That's what it did. <laughs> it created a boredom black hole, sucked the whole universe in. Yeah, including this one. Oh. Yeah. What our universe? Yeah. Are you bored with this episode? No, I'm. Yeah, because but it's as a result of Fantastic Four. Oh, <laughs> it sucked the energy out of the room. Yeah. I get it. Yeah, cool. Exactly. Wow. wow. And that's the show, isn't it? It is. Bring us to a close. Thank you, everybody, so much for listening. I hope we're here to just be in your ears while you solve your own problems this yeah. week <laughs> and get through all this drama on your own. Because you, everybody, you know what? Everybody out there is doing a great, doing a great job. Yeah, absolutely. Good. Good on you for plowing through. I yeah. think. Sucks. Sucks out there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but thank you. If you've got time in between the world sucking a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and you wanna you wanna tell a friend about it. You know what? Call a friend. People are doing that all all, Ring a all ding the time. Ding. Give you give a give a friend a call, shoot him a text, say, hey, yeah. you wanna you wanna get on the FaceTime? It's, it's very good. You know, I'm I've been doing a Zoom every now and yeah, then. Yeah, right. Get it mm. get out there and be like, Oh my god, it's so great to catch up in these trying times, but also have you tried listening to the Weekly Planet podcast? That's right. Got all kinds of comic book movie news. I mean, less these days because there isn't any <laughs> news currently. Everything's being cancelled. But if you, my friend, I haven't seen in a while and it's really good to catch up for me in my emotional state. Yes, yes. If, if you would like to hear about things being cancelled, if you'd like to hear about more things constantly being cancelled in this world, it's perfect. you should you listen to the it. Weekly Planet podcast and also subscribe to the Weekly Planet podcast and leave a nice review for the Weekly Planet podcast. James, do you have a nice review there? You know I do. I do. Oh, great. This good, is from tallguy0316. Great name. How tall, though? Let us know. Probably uh, that number. Yeah, that's in right. Feet. You can uh, um, you can, you can can do this in-app. Open it up. Yeah. Five mm-hmm. stars helps. But it says, uh, tall guy says, been listening since my freshman year of college after my roommate at the time introduced me to it. Uh, we don't talk anymore, but I still listen to you guys. So I guess it worked out. <laughs> is good. Uh, Perfect for us. Exactly. And this is from Jimbly Jim Jam. Oh, yeah, Five nice. stars again. Will make you forget that the world is ending. Hopefully. Well, we mentioned it a lot, but still, maybe. But like, there's portions of the show where we don't mention the world is ending. That's true, yeah. yeah. I mean, we bring yeah. it up sometimes. Also, other people have mentioned... We try to keep it to a minimum. Yes. Just to be clear, off air, our, ex- our conversations are almost exclusively about how the world is ending, but we're trying not to bring we that in. We don't bring that podcast. in here. Yeah, because we want these to be timeless. Except when we do. Uh, there's also other people who have written reviews where they're like, my review got removed and now it's back. So, so that's really cool yeah. that uh, people checked and went, Yep, I'm going to yeah. fix that up. Well, thank you to all, all those people. Uh, if yes. you'd like to get in contact with us, you can uh, go to Weekly Planet Pod at Gmail, at Facebook, at Twitter, at Bandcamp. Yep. You can also go to planetbroadcasting.com. You can see all the podcasts on the Planet Broadcasting Network. Mm-hmm. You can sign up to the newsletter from the aforementioned great man, Rob <gasps> Collings. He's at Rob Collings on Twitter. Yes. I'm at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter. And on Instagram, I'm Nick Maso, N I C K M A S E A U. You are Mr. Sunday Movies Everywhere. Is that I would never not be, and I won't ever change. Maybe you change it for a laugh. Maybe? I might change it for a laugh yeah, one change day. It, change it for a laugh. Change it for Halloween. It'll be like Spooky Skeleton, Mr. Movies. <laughs> oh, Mr. Pumpkin Movies. <laughs> it's this year. Maybe I'll change it now to, to Mr. Mr. Pumpkin Pump- Movies. Change it now to Mr. Pumpkin <laughs> Movies. Do it right now. Okay, great. Great stuff. Uh, <laughs> just you, just you, not the ass, just the user. No, I know, because then yeah. someone will take it. Yeah, they'll t- <laughs> and they'll blackmail you. But also, uh, uh, um, if you'd like to support the show, you can go to patreon.com. Slash incredible. <laughs> Have you added pumpkins? <laughs> Mr. Pumpkin movies. Yeah, Mr. Oh, I'll put it in my picture. I'll okay, do that great, as well. Yeah. Great, great. Uh, if you'd like to support the show, you can go to patreon.com. Mr. Sun- hey, movies. If you'd like to chuck in a buck, we'd very much appreciate it. I know it's tough times out there for everyone. Yeah, it really is. But uh, so obviously you don't have to. Yeah, that's absolutely yeah. true. All right, uh, quick question. Regular pumpkin or jack-o'-lantern pumpkin? Jack-o'-lantern pumpkin. You don't think I should just do a regular one? No, I reckon jack-o'-lantern pumpkin. <laughs> All right, just yeah, checking. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, you can also go to the Amazon affiliate link in our episode description. If you're buying your stuff on Amazon, as a lot of people are right now, yes, uh, yes, click yes. through our link and uh, buy them on our app on, through our link. We'd love it. it. Be, We'd love it. Great. Just your regular grocery shop or whatever you're getting. We'd, we'd love monitors. it. Monitors. You, you, um, what do people need? Your hair clipping uh, Oh, you're yeah, going to do that this week. It, yeah. You're going to home cut your hair? Yeah, I'm going to borrow my parents. You're going to borrow your parents? Yeah, they borrow my parents to get my mum to cut my hair like she <laughs> when I was a kid. <laughs> and your dad to complain. <laughs> no. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> your mum can cut your hair and your dad can complain exactly. that the dinner isn't being made. <laughs> okay, great. That's Perfect. right, yeah. Uh, let's see. We've got some T-shirts on tpublic.com. Buy yourself a T-shirt. Ready Please for don't. when... 
uh, we're all free again to leave the house. Oh, It'll the dream! Be, sooner rather than later, I'm I'm hoping. Yes, me too. Yeah, uh, uh, we thank you to the brute and the basilisk and rack and for all our musical themes. Yep. Oh, if you are stuck in it all, you can buy our USB tapes. Oh yeah. Which have all our movie commentaries on them. That's right. All of them. Every single and, one of and them. Best dogs and all sorts of crazy stuff. That's right. Uh, you That'd can also go to the Planet Broadcasting Great Mates Facebook group. Yep. If you want to, you don't don't feel isolated. Go on there and have some nice, good old chats with some people. Yes. About nerd stuff. Yeah, that's right. It's yeah. running all the time, every day. It will never stop. Mm. Right. Unless it changes to Planet Broadcasting Pumpkin Mates. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Excuse me a nuts. moment, won't you? That would be nuts, Mason, if uh, someone did that. Yeah, uh, and mm. that's that's the whole lot, isn't it? That's the whole lot. Thank you to the Brute and Basilisk and Rack and Prolo Musical Themes. Next week, a different thing, won't it be? It'll be a different thing. We'll, yeah. we'll think of something. Yeah, we'll always, great. We'll, yeah. we'll always think of something and have a grand time about it. You know we will. All uh, right, thanks, you guys, for listening. Uh, grab that, Jimmy, guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. I mean, if you want. It's up to you.